الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام الرسول اللہ وعلیٰ علیہ وصاب اجمین اما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ما کان محمد ابا عہدم رجالکم ولا کے رسول اللہ و خاتم النبین و قان اللہ و بکل شین علیمہ رب شلی صدری و سلی عمری و حل العقدۃ من لسانی یافقہ کولی مائی ریسپیکٹ ایلڈرز and my dear brothers and sisters i welcome all of you with the islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may peace mercy and blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of almighty god be on all of you it is a pleasure for me to give a talk in ghana especially kumasi Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse number 54 Makaru makallahu wa lahu khairul makhirin They planned and plotted Allah to plan Allah is the best of planners Two days back I was supposed to give a talk and Allah sent down rains and most of us were sad but Allah planned a better thing for the people of Kumasi because two days back the organizer had put a ticket of 10 cd for entry and 30 cd for the vip i was very disappointed allah let the rain come and we had the program two days later with free entry and mashallah now the crowd is multiple times bigger than what it was there day first <laughs> I personally do not like at all that anyone charges for Islamic lectures. Islam and Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is free for everyone. I make it very clear before coming that no one should charge for any of my lectures. In spite of that, the organizers had kept a ticket. I was very disappointed. So Allah planned a better thing. He brought down the rains and He cancelled the program. And now we have a bigger gathering, Mashallah. Tanbeer, Tanbeer, Tanbeer. The topic of this evening's talk of mine is Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace be upon him. In the Bible. Islam comes from the root word salam which means peace. It's also derived from the Arabic word silm which means to submit your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to almighty God. Islam in short means peace acquired by submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to almighty God. And any person who acquires peace by submitting his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to almighty God is called as a Muslim. Many people have a misconception that Islam is a new religion which came into existence 1400 years back and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the founder of this religion. In fact, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on this earth. And Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is not the founder of this religion but he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the last and final messenger of this religion of Islam Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fatir chapter number 35 verse number 24 wa im min ummatin illa khalafiya nazir there has never been a nation or a people without a warner having lived amongst them in the past allah says in surah rad chapter number 13 verse number 7 wali kulli qaum in had and to every nation to every people have we sent a guide there are 25 prophets mention my name in the glorious quran for example adam noah abraham ismail Isaac, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. By name, 25 prophets have been mentioned in the Quran. 
But Allah also says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 164, we narrate to you the stories of some of the prophets, of the others we don't. Allah repeats the message in Surah Ghafir, chapter number 40, verse number 78. We tell you the stories of some of the prophets, of the others we don't. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, it is mentioned in a Sahih Hadith, in Mishkad al-Masabi, volume number 3, Hadith number 5737, which is also repeated in Ahmad ibn Hanbal, volume number 5, page number 265 and 266. Our beloved Prophet said, there were 124,000 prophets sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of this earth. But by name, only 25 are mentioned in the Quran. All the prophets, all the messengers that were sent before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only sent for their people and for their nation. And the message which they brought was supposed to be followed only till a particular time period. For example, Moses, peace be upon him, was only sent for the Jews. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was sent only for the Bani Israel, for the children of Israel, for the Jews. The Quran says in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 49, we have appointed him, Jesus, peace be upon him, as a messenger for the Bani Israel, for the children of Israel, for the Jews. A similar message is given in the Bible. In Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 5 and 6, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tells his apostles, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, into the city of the Samaritans ye shall enter not but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tells his apostles, tells the disciples, go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are the non-Jews, the Hindus, the Muslims, the Buddhists. Into the city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24. I have not been sent but to the lost ship of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was only sent for the Bani Israel, for the children of Israel, only for the Jews. I started my talk by quoting a verse of the glorious Quran from Surah Azab. Chapter number 33, verse number 40, which says, Makana Muhammadun Aba Adim Mirjalikum, Walaki Rasulullah, Wakhatam and Nabin, Wakana Law Bikulish and Alima. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of any of you men, but he is a messenger of Allah. He is the seal of the prophets. Allah is all knowing, full of knowledge. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger, the last and final prophet. He was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs. The Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, that we have sent thee not, but as a mercy to all the worlds, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humankind. Allah repeats the message in Surah Sabah, chapter number 34, verse number 28. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَّةَ لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَزِيرًا وَلَكِنَّا أَكْسَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ That we have sent thee not but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them against sin. But most of the humankind yet do not know. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he was the last and final messenger, he was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs, he was sent for the whole of humankind. And the Quran says in Surah Sabah, chapter 34, verse number 28, but most of the human beings yet do not know. Just because the Quran says that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger, we Muslims believe in it.
Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Salah, chapter number 56, hadith number 429, the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all the messengers that came before me were sent only for their people. But I have been sent as the messenger to the whole of humankind, to the whole of humanity. Just because the Quran says Prophet Muhammad is the messenger for the whole of humanity, we Muslims believe in it because we believe that the glorious Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Quran also says, But most of the humankind yet do not know. The non-Muslims. They do not believe that the glorious Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the word of Almighty God. So that's the reason they do not believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger for the whole of humankind. I've given the talk, is the Quran God's word, where I've proved undoubtedly with reason, logic and science that the glorious Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If any unbiased human being sees this lecture of mine, he will have to agree that the glorious Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we cannot force every human being to see my lecture, to see my talk. The Quran gives us a formula in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, which says, Kul ya al kitab, say, O people of the book. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala nushrika bihi shayyam. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yattakhi zabaadun abaadun arbaaban min dun Allah. That we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Fain tawallahu. If then they turn back, Fakulu Shadu, say he bear witness, be anna Muslimun, that we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of the glorious Quran, Surah Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number 64, according to me, is the master key for doing dawah. How to convey the message of Islam to the non Muslims? Ta'alo ila kalimatin sawa im bainan or bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've given a talk on concept of God in the major world religion. Where I've proved from the scriptures of the major world religions that there is only one God. The second most important point in the religion of Islam is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God. I've given the talk on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the major world religious scriptures. But today, my topic specifically is Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Bible. Today, my main purpose is to prove to the Christian that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been prophesied in the Bible. If the Christian do not believe that Quran is the word of Almighty God, I will prove from their scriptures, the Bible, which the Christians believe is the word of God, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is also mentioned in your Bible. First, we'll discuss about the prophecies in the Old Testament. The Bible, if we analyze, is divided into two parts. The Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament deals with the stories of all the prophets, from the first prophet, that is Adam, peace be upon him, up to the prophets before Jesus, peace be upon him. And New Testament deals with the stories and the life of prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. According to the Catholic version of the Bible, the Douay version, there are 73 books in the Bible. If you read the Protestant version of the Bible, they have thrown out seven books 
from the Old Testament, which they call as apocrypha. Apocrypha means doubtful. So the Bible of the Protestants contains 66 books. The Old Testament of the Protestants contains 39 books and the Old Testament of the Catholics contains 46 books. The New Testament of both Catholics and Protestants contain 27 books. First, we'll discuss the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Old Testament. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 157, they follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, who is mentioned in the scriptures, the law and the gospel. If you read the Old Testament, there is a very explicit prophecy in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, where Almighty God says, I shall raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall speak all that I command him. When we ask the Christians, that who does this prophecy refer to? And most of the Christians say, this prophecy refers to no one but Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And when we ask them, that how does this prophecy refer to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? They tell us, this prophecy says, I shall raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, like unto Moses, peace be upon him. So this prophecy says, the prophet to come, would be like Moses, peace be upon him. And the only prophet who is like Moses, peace be upon him, is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And when we ask them, how is Jesus, peace be upon him, like Moses, peace be upon him? So they give us two reasons. Number one, Moses, peace be upon him, was a Jew. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a Jew. Moses, peace be upon him, was a prophet of God, was a spiritual leader. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a prophet of God, was a spiritual leader. These two similarities are sufficient to prove that Jesus, peace be upon him, has been prophesied in Deuteronomy chapter number 18, verse number 18. I tell these Christians that if these two similarities are the only two points for fulfillment of the prophecy, that the person should be a Jew and he should be a prophet, then all the prophets mentioned in the Old Testament, after Moses, peace be upon him, all the prophets mentioned in the Bible, after Moses, peace be upon him, like Solomon, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, Joel, Hosea, John the Baptist, all of them were Jew and all of them were prophets of God. So all these prophets mentioned in the Bible, after Moses, peace be upon him, they fulfilled the prophecy. What is so unique about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? So, I am here to help the Christians. I am here to make the Christians understand the Bible better. And if I am wrong, the Christians are welcome during question and answer time to correct me. Let's analyze the prophecy in detail, minutely. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, Almighty God says, I shall raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall speak all that I command him. Let's take the prophecy and analyze it part by part. First point is, I shall raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren. The first point of the prophecy is that the prophet to come will be amongst the brethren of Moses, peace be upon him. What is the meaning of the word brethren? Brethren means the children of the brothers. And we know from the Bible that Abraham, peace be upon him, had two sons. The first son was Ishmael, or Ishmael, peace be upon him, who was the son from the second wife of Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. He was the son of Hajra or Hagar. 
The second son of Abraham, peace be upon him, was born approximately 17 years later. His name was Ishaq or Isaac, who was born to the first wife of Abraham, peace be upon him, that is Sarah. May Allah be pleased with her. So Abraham, peace be upon him, had two sons. The children of both these sons, the children of Ismail and the children of Isaac, peace be upon them both, they are brethren unto one another. They are the children of the brothers. All the descendants of Ishmael, they are Arabs. And the descendants of Isaac are Jews. That means the Jews and Arabs are brethren unto one another. So by analyzing the first point of the prophecy itself, I shall raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren. That means the prophet should be a brethren of Moses, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, wasn't a brethren of Moses, peace be upon him. He was a Jew. He was a descendant. He was not a brethren. So the first point itself disqualifies all the Jews, including Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And we know from history that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was a descendant of Ismail, peace be upon him. That means he was a brethren of the Jews, including Moses, peace be upon him. So this first point of the prophecy, that the prophet should be a brethren, the prophet that claimed prophethood after Ismail, alayhi salam, from his descendant, the first person was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Furthermore, if you analyze, I shall raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, like Moses, peace be upon him. Let us analyze whether Jesus is like Moses, peace be upon them, or whether Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Moses, peace be upon him. I can list several similarities between Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, and several dissimilarities between Jesus and Moses peace be upon them point number one Moses and Muhammad peace be upon them both had a mother and a father Jesus Christ peace be upon him had a mother but no father so Moses and Muhammad peace be upon them they are alike Muhammad peace be upon him is like Moses peace be upon him and Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Moses, peace be upon him. Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, both were born naturally. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born miraculously. He was born without any male intervention. And that is also mentioned in the Bible as well as the Quran. The Bible says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 1, verse number 18, before they came together, that is before Mary and Joseph came together, she was found with a baby by the power of the Holy Ghost. A similar message is given in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 1, verse number 34, 35. When the glad tiding was given to Mother Mary, may Allah be pleased with her, that she will have a son, she replies, How shall I have a son? when I know it, no man. So the angel replies that the Holy Ghost will come upon thee and the power of the Most High will overshadow thee. A similar but much sublime, much noble message is given in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 45 to verse number 47. When Mother Mary, peace be upon her, when she was given the message, glad tidings, that she will have a son, she replies, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? The Bible says, how shall I have a son when I know it no man? Knowing a man means sexually. Here, in the Quran she says, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? Touch me means sexually. The angel replies, Allah created what he wills and when he decrees a matter Allah decrees a matter he just says to it 
kun fayqun be and it is when allah decrees the matter he just said to it be and it is comparing both the messages are similar but the words of the quran are much more sublime much more noble because if you read the bible in the bible gospel of luke chapter 1 verse number 34 says when mary peace be upon her says how shall i have a son when i know it no man so the angel says the holy ghost will come upon thee and the power of the most high shall overpower thee you know it gives a mental picture which is disturbing it is not very sublime but the quranic message is more sublime and noble when mary peace be upon her says in surah imran chapter 3 verse number 45 to 47 how shall i have a son when no man has touched me so the angels reply allah created what he will it and when he decrees a matter he just says kun fayakun be and it is it is more sublime but both the bible and the quran say that jesus christ peace be upon him was born miraculously without any male intervention so if we analyze as far as the birth of all these prophets are concerned muhammad peace be upon him is like moses peace be upon him and jesus peace be upon him is unlike moses peace be upon him third point moses and muhammad peace be upon them both of them they were married and they had children but according to the bible jesus christ peace be upon him he was not married he had no children so muhammad peace be upon him is like moses peace be upon him and jesus peace be upon him is unlike moses peace be upon him fourth point moses and muhammad peace be upon them both of them had a natural death jesus christ peace be upon him according to the bible he had an unnatural death according to the quran in surah nisa chapter 4 verse 158 he was raised up alive according to the understanding of the christians in the bible he was crucified he died on the cross though i can prove from the bible he did not die on the cross but even if we agree that the christian understanding is correct today is not the talk on whether jesus christ peace be upon him was crucified or not so i will not talk about that but even if we agree what the christians say we have to agree both according to the bible as well as the quran jesus christ peace be upon him did not die naturally that is the reason muhammad peace be upon him is like moses peace be upon him and jesus peace be upon him is unlike moses peace be upon him point number five Moses and Muhammad peace be upon them both of them were buried on this earth but Jesus Christ peace be upon him according to the Quran as well as the Bible he was raised up alive so Muhammad peace be upon him is like Moses peace be upon him and Jesus peace be upon him is unlike Moses peace be upon him point number six Moses and Muhammad peace be upon them both of them had to migrate Moses peace be upon him, he had to migrate to Median and he was welcomed by Jethro. When Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was persecuted, he had to migrate to Yathrib and later on the city was called as Medina. Jesus Christ peace be upon him, he did not migrate, he did not do Hijrah. So Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is like Moses peace be upon him and Jesus peace be upon him is unlike Moses peace be upon him. Point number seven. Moses and Muhammad peace be upon them after they migrated both were pursued. They were followed. Moses peace be upon him we know that he was followed by the army of the Pharaoh and there was a hot pursuit. We know Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him after he went to Medina there were many battles fought between the pagans of Makkah and the Muslims many battles were fought we don't know of any such thing that happened with Jesus peace be upon him in his lifestyle in his complete life so Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is like Prophet Moses peace be upon him and Prophet Jesus peace be upon him is unlike Prophet Moses peace be upon him furthermore Moses and Muhammad peace be upon them besides having moral victory they also had a physical victory Moses we know 
after he was followed by the army of Pharaoh, of Pharaoh when Moses peace be upon him he parts the sea and he crosses the sea when Pharaoh and his army follow him the sea again joins and the army of Pharaoh along with the Pharaoh is drowned and Moses peace be upon him besides having a moral victory also has a physical victory we know a similar thing happened with Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him there were many battles fought between the Muslims the followers of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and the mushriks of Makkah the pagans of Makkah and finally in the last battle that is the Fateh Makkah Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him enters Makkah and there is a great victory and he's victorious not only spiritually but also physically as far as Jesus Christ peace be upon him is concerned he got moral victory but he did not have physical victory so Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is like Prophet Moses peace be upon him and Prophet Jesus peace be upon him is unlike Prophet Moses peace be upon him ninth point Moses and Muhammad peace be upon them both of them as a whole they were accepted by the people Moses peace be upon him initially there was a little rejection but later on before he died his people as a whole accepted him as the prophet of Almighty God similar thing happened with Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the people of Makkah most of them initially rejected him there were few followers later on almost all the majority of his people they accepted Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him as a messenger of Almighty God in the case of Jesus Christ peace be upon him he hardly had very few disciples most of his people they rejected him it's mentioned in the gospel of John chapter number one verse number 11 he approached his own and his own did not accept him they mentioned in the Bible that all forsook him and fled even the apostles so Jesus Christ peace be upon him was not accepted by most of his people that is the reason Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is like Prophet Moses peace be upon him and Prophet Jesus peace be upon him is unlike Prophet Moses peace be upon him tenth point Prophet Moses and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon them both of them bought new laws but Prophet Jesus peace be upon him he did not bring any new law it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew chapter number 5 verse number 17 to 20 Jesus Christ peace be upon him says think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets I have come not to destroy but to fulfill unless the heaven and the earth pass away not one jot or tittle shall pass away from the law until all be fulfilled and whosoever shall break one of the least commandments shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven and whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach men to do so shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven so Jesus Christ peace be upon him only came to reconfirm fulfill the law that came before but according to gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verse number 17 to 20 he did not bring any new law that is the reason Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is like Prophet Moses peace be upon him and Prophet Jesus peace be upon him is unlike Prophet Moses peace be upon him 11th point Prophet Moses and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon them both of them when the revelation was given to them by Almighty God during their lifetime itself the revelations were written down and they were complete that is not the case with Prophet Jesus peace be upon him Prophet Moses peace be upon him when he got the revelation during his lifetime itself it was written down same with Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him when the Quran was revealed over a period of 22 and a half years during his life itself it was written and compiled as far as Jesus peace be upon him is concerned when the revelation was given to him the Injil it was written several years after he went from this earth scholars say more than 50 years more than 60 years more than 70 years after he left 
the teachings were written down. That's the reason Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Prophet Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them, besides bringing spiritual laws, they also brought social laws. Both of them, besides being spiritual leaders, they brought social laws. Laws how it should be led in society. As far as Jesus is concerned, peace be upon him, he only brought spiritual laws. Reconfirmed what came earlier, but did not give any social law. That's the reason Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Moses, peace be upon him, and Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Moses, peace be upon him. The 13th point is, Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them, besides being prophets of God, they were statesmen, or they were like kings. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was only a prophet of God. Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them, besides being the prophets of God, they were head of state. They had the full state, which was not the case with Jesus, peace be upon him. Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them were like kings. A king means a person who could give the punishment of life and death, which was not the case with Jesus, peace be upon him. Jesus, peace be upon him, says in the Gospel of John, chapter number 18, verse number 36, my kingdom is not of this world. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Moses, peace be upon him, and Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Moses, peace be upon him. Only on this prophecy, I shall raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee. Only this one point of the prophecy, that the prophet should be like Moses, peace be upon him, I have given no less than 13 similarities between Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. And 13 dissimilarities between Jesus, peace be upon him, and Moses, peace be upon him. This prophecy does not befit anyone except the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him the prophecy continues i shall raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren like unto thee and i shall put my words into his mouth and he shall speak all that i command him the prophecy says almighty god says i shall put words into the mouth of this prophet and he shall say all that i command him and we know that the revelations were given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an unlettered. And whatever way he got, he repeated verbatim as though words were put in his mouth. For example, the first five verses of the Quran to be revealed were Ikra bismi rabbika lazi khalaq. Read, recite in the name of thy Lord who has created. Khalaq al insana min alaq who has created men from something which clings, a leech-like substance. Ikra bismi rabbikal lazi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, ikra wa rabbukal akram. Read, thy Lord is most bountiful. Allazi allama bil kalam, allama insana ma'alam ya'alam. Read, in the name of thy Lord who is most bountiful, who taught men the use of the pen, who taught men what he knew not. So whatever wahi he got, Whatever revelation he got from Almighty God, he repeated verbatim as though words were put in his mouth. This was not the case with Jesus, peace be upon him. So this prophecy of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, does not befit anyone but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Only from this one verse of the Bible, book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, it is sufficient to prove that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a prophet of Almighty God. The prophecy continues. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. That whosoever does not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it from him. Some versions of the Bible say, I will take revenge. Almighty God is saying that Verily I say unto you, whosoever does not hearken unto his words, 
whosoever will not follow the words of this prophet who will speak in my name i will require it of him i will take revenge that means if you do not follow the teachings of prophet muhammad peace be upon him almighty god is telling you in the bible i will take revenge any christian who does not follow the teachings of prophet muhammad peace be upon him almighty god is telling in the bible he will take revenge from you the prophecy says and whosoever will not hearken unto the words which he shall speak in my name almighty god is saying if you do not heed the words of this prophet who will speak in my name and we know in the last and final revelation of the quran which was revealed to prophet muhammad peace be upon him every chapter of the quran except for surah tawbah chapter number nine begins with the formula bismillah rahman rahim in the name of allah most gracious most merciful every chapter of the quran begins with bismillah rahman rahim in the name of allah most gracious most merciful it is fulfillment of the prophecy whosoever will not hearken unto his words which he shall speak in my name saying bismillah rahman rahim is far superior to saying in the name of god because god is general in the name of allah it's a proper noun and whosoever shall not hearken unto his words which he shall speak in my name the name of almighty god and the proper name of almighty god is allah not only in the quran also in the bible that's the reason when jesus christ peace be upon him when he was put on the cross it's mentioned in the gospel of mark chapter number 15 verse number 34 and gospel of matthew chapter number 27 verse number 46 when jesus christ peace be upon him was put on the cross on the 11th hour he says Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. So as to say, Oh God, Oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? Alhamdulillah, in all the translations of the Bible, in all the versions of the Bible, irrespective of whatever language is translated into, English, Hindi, French, German, Portuguese, the original words of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, has been maintained. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. So as to say, then the translation says, Oh God, oh God, why is thou forsaken me? I'm asking you a question. Does Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani sound like, Oh God, oh God, why is thou forsaken me? Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani, does it sound like, Jehovah, Jehovah, why is thou forsaken me? <laughs> Says no. Hebrew and Arabic are sister languages. If you translate Allah, Allah, Lama Sabakhtani into Arabic, it is Allah, Allah, Lama Tarakhtani. It sounds similar. And if you read the Scofield's Bible, it says Allah means A-L-A-H, Allah, the name of God. Even Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he called Almighty God by Allah, not by God. The prophecy says, whosoever will not hearken unto his words, which he shall speak in my name, Almighty God is saying my name, that is Allah. And every chapter of the glorious Quran, except for Surah Tawbah chapter 9, begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. <laughs> Almighty God is telling the Christians and the Jews, both of them, if you do not follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who he shall speak in my name, in the name of Allah, I will take revenge. Furthermore, if you read, it's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 21 and 22. How shall we know the words of the prophet are from Lord? How will we know if what the prophet says, it is not from the Lord? And the verse continues, if the prophet prophesizes something and it doesn't follow, it doesn't come to pass, that means it is not the word of Lord. That means to make it more sure, the prophecy continues. How will we come to know? Maybe anyone will say in the name of God. It may not be the word of God. So how will we come to know whether it's a word of God or not? So the prophecy continues that if the prophet says something, if they prophesy and if it does not follow, if it does not come to pass, those words are not from Almighty God. And we know 
everything what the prophet muhammad peace be upon him prophesied came exactly to the minutest detail it came out to be true time will not permit us to speak about all the prophecies of prophet muhammad peace be upon him i'll just mention one or two prophet muhammad peace be upon him said that the muslims will defeat the two superpowers at that time the two superpowers were the persians and the byzantines at that time the muslims were so few leave aside defeat the muslims couldn't even have thought that they could resist these two superpowers prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at that time said that the muslims will defeat the two superpowers the persians and the byzantines and alhamdulillah several years later the muslims did defeat the persians and the byzantines i'll give you one more prophecy of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a man by the name of Suraka the person who plotted to kill the prophet when he migrated to Medina after the plan of the pagan Arabs failed when they tried to kill the prophet and when prophet migrated to Medina he plotted to kill the prophet the prophet prophesizes that this man Suraka he will become a muslim and after he becomes a muslim he will have access to the crown of the emperor of persia and we know from history that suraka who tried to kill the prophet later on he accepted islam not only did he accept islam he even took part several years later he took part in the muslim army to defeat the persians and the prophecy came exactly true he also had access to the crown of the emperor of persia imagine the prophecy was fulfilled to the minutest detail and there are several prophecies that means prophet muhammad peace be upon him is a true prophet and the words he spoke were the words of almighty god time will not permit us to discuss all the prophecies in the old testament i'll just mention two more due to lack of time it's mentioned in the book of isaiah chapter number 29 verse number 12 that the book shall be given to the prophet and it will be said read i pray thee and he will say i am not learned if we go to the original manuscript the verse of isaiah chapter number 29 verse number 12 talking about the prophet the book shall be given to him and it would be said read i pray thee i pray thee is an addition in the original manuscript it is not there so actually it will be said read and he will say i am not learned and if we know the history of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the first revelation of almighty god the glorious quran which was revealed to prophet muhammad peace be upon him was by archangel gabriel in gara hira and when archangel gabriel jibril alaihi salam when he told to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ikra the prophet replied ma ana biqari i am not learned exact fulfillment of the prophecy of the book of isaiah chapter number 29 verse number 12 that when the book will be given and will be told to him read he will say i am not learned when jibril alaihi salam told to prophet ikra the prophet replied ma ana biqari i am not learned this prophecy fulfills no one but the last and final messenger prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the one prophecy in detail about deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 18 to 22 this is second book of isaiah chapter number 29 verse number 12 prophet muhammad peace be upon him is also mentioned my name in the old testament it's mentioned in the song of solomon chapter number 5 verse number 16 in hebrew i will say it says hikum mamtakim wi kullu muhammadin zaidudi zairai baina jerusalem he is most sweet he is altogether lovely he is my beloved he is my friend o daughter of jerusalem here the name of prophet muhammad peace be upon him is there it says muhammadin in the hebrew and semitic languages when we want to give respect to someone we add m to it so to the name of muhammad is added m it becomes muhammadin and they've translated into altogether lovely 
But the original name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is there in the Old Testament, Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. Hikko Mamitakim, we could look Muhammadim, Zaidudi Zairai by Jerusalem. Due to shortage of time, we will discuss a few prophecies mentioned about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the New Testament. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6. That Jesus, peace be upon him, said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, I have been sent as a messenger to you, confirming the laws that came before me and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come whose name shall be Ahmad. There are several prophecies of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Time will not permit us to discuss about all the prophecies. We'll just discuss a few. A few important prophecies about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the New Testament. The Jews, they were waiting for the Messiah, but they did not believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was the Messiah because it was known to them that before the Messiah, Elias will come. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, told that. He explicitly mentioned, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 17, verse number 11 to 13. Elias, will surely come before and he shall put things straight he has already come but you know him not then the disciples understood what jesus christ peace be upon him is talking is about john the baptist the elias which is supposed to come before the messiah jesus christ peace be upon him was john the baptist jesus christ peace be upon him also said in the gospel of matthew chapter number 11 verse number 11 there is not a human being born of a woman which has risen greater than John the Baptist. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 11, verse number 11, there has not been a human being who is born to a woman which has risen greater than John the Baptist. The Jews, they were waiting for the Messiah, for the Christ, and Elias, so the Jews, they sent priests and Levites to John the Baptist. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 21. And they asked John the Baptist, that why aren't you very clear? Why don't you tell us? Art thou the Christ? How long? Why don't you make it clear? Art thou the Christ? And John the Baptist confesses and he said, I confess to you, I am not the Christ. I am not the Messiah. And we know Jesus Christ, peace be upon you, was the Messiah. So John the Baptist could not lie. And he said, I'm not the Messiah. The next question they ask, art thou Elias? And he says, no. They ask the third question, art thou that prophet? He says, no. Basically, in Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 21 to verse number 25, there were three questions asked to John the Baptist. Art thou the Christ? And he says, no. And we know he was not the Christ. He was not the Messiah. The second question, art thou Elias? He says, no. Now there is a contradiction between Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and John the Baptist, between Isa alayhi salam and Yahya alayhi salam. And both of them, according to us, they were prophets of God. We cannot say that either of them lied. This we leave it to the Christian to solve the problem. Who told a lie? We will not interfere. We aren't so much concerned about the second question, who is Elias? It's the problem of the Bible and the Christian, we will not interfere. We don't to take sides. But we Muslims are more bothered about the third question. Art thou that prophet? And the answer is no. John the Baptist says, no. And who is this, that prophet? If you read in the cross reference, in any Bible with concordance, it will tell you that prophet is same prophet which is prophesied in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 15 to 18. There are three distinct questions asked to John the Baptist. But the Christians only see two questions. Why? The only thing two questions asked. 
Art thou the Christ? Art thou the Messiah? And he says, no. Art thou the Elias? And he says, no. Then the third question, art thou that prophet? And the answer is no. That means all three are different prophets. The Messiah is different. Elias is different. And that prophet is different. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is the Messiah, which we agree. We do not doubt. The more than 100 prophecies mentioned about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Old Testament. Because all the Muslims believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. We believe that he was the Messiah translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. We do not argue regarding more than 100 prophecies mentioned in the Old Testament about the Messiah, about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, because we believe he was the Messiah. We believe he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. But we tell the Christians, why do you deny the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned in the Old Testament and the New Testament? <laughs> Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 21 to 25, three distinct questions are asked to John the Baptist. Art thou the Messiah? Art thou the Christ? He says, no. Art thou the Elias? He says, no. Art thou that prophet? He says, no. That means there were three different people, not three in one. So if you say Jesus is the Messiah, peace be upon him, Jesus cannot be that prophet. That prophet has to be someone else, and that is no one but the last and final messenger prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we have discussed a few minutes back all the similarities between that prophet and Moses, peace be upon him. It continues and it's mentioned in Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 25. Then the priest and the Levites, the Jews, they say, Why does thou baptize? If thou not the Christ, thou art not Elias, thou art not that prophet. There are three distinct things told to John the Baptist that why do thou baptize? Why do you baptize if you are not the Christ? If you are not Elias, if you are not that prophet? Three distinct questions. You ask any Christian, who is this that prophet mentioned in Gospel of John chapter number 1 verse number 21, 25? They have no reply. They can't say it, it means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, because it's already mentioned that he is the Messiah. It refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I will pray to my Father to send you another comforter who will abide with you forever. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16, that I will pray to my Father to send you another comforter who will abide with you forever. That means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, will not abide with the Christian forever. This new comforter, this new prophet who will come, will abide with you forever. He further says in the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26, But when the comforter shall come, who I shall send from my father, the spirit of truth preceding before thee, he shall testify me. This comforter to come, who my father will send, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, he will testify me, he will talk about me, he will testify that I was a messenger of God. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him? All these three verses I quoted, Gospel of John chapter 14 verse 16, Gospel of John chapter 15 verse 26, and Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 7 talks about the comforter. When you ask the Christians, who is this comforter? They say, this comforter is the Holy Spirit. I ask the Christians, how does it refer to the Holy Spirit? It's clearly mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him? 
the criteria for the comforter to come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should depart. Only after he departs will the comforter come. We know that the Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born. The Holy Spirit was there in the womb of Elizabeth. The Holy Spirit was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was being baptized. So surely this prophecy cannot refer to the Holy Spirit. The word that they translate to comforter in the Greek and Aramaic, they say it is parakletos. Parakletos actually means an advocate or friend. But irrespective whether they translate as comforter or advocate or friend, all of these, mashallah, befect perfectly Prophet Muhammad But if you go to the original manuscript, it is not parakletos, it is perikletos. And perikletos means the praiseworthy. One who praises. Translated into Arabic, it means Ahmad, which was another name for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The original word is Perikletos, which if you translate means the praiseworthy, the one who praises. The one who praises in Arabic, if you translate, means Ahmad, which was another name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Jabani Israel, O children of Israel, I have been sent as a messenger to you, confirming the law that came before me and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come whose name shall be Ahmad. So, original word is Perikletos, which means Ahmad. But irrespective whether it is Perikletos or Perikletos, whether it is Ahmad, the one who praises, or advocate, or friend, or comforter, Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah. All these meanings perfect perfectly the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Further, if you go, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now, for he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. I repeat, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he shall speak, he shall glorify me. He, 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 he. Five, six, he. Telling it's not a Holy Spirit. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. The only messenger of God. The only human being who claimed to be messenger of God. After Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. It is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He is even mentioned in the last revelation of Almighty God, the glorious Quran. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam repeated the last revelation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, this is the glorious Quran. And is mentioned by name no less than 25 times in the Quran. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, testified and glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him in the Quran by name no less than 25 times. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is telling everyone, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he shall speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. This prophecy refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There are several other prophecies mentioned in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The criteria given by Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, about knowing a true prophet is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 7, verse number 16 to 20. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, By their fruits ye shall know them. Do men gather grapes from thorns? or figs from thistles every good tree shall bear good fruits every evil tree shall bear evil fruits by their fruits ye shall know them i repeat jesus christ peace be upon him put a criteria i would like to end my talk 
by analyzing the criteria Jesus Christ peace be upon him put for a true prophet gospel of Matthew chapter number 7 verse number 16 to 20 by their fruits he shall know them do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles every good tree shall bear good fruits and every evil tree shall bear evil fruits by their fruits he shall know them and we have several testimonies of non-muslims regarding the greatness of prophet mama sallallahu you can give a lecture you can talk for days together regarding the testimony not of muslims of non-muslims regarding the last and final messenger prophet mama sallallahu I'll just mention a couple to you. There was an article that came in the Time magazine on the 15th of July, 1974. And the title was Great Leaders of History. And many people gave their reasoning. Who was the greatest leader in human history? Historians gave their views. Writers gave. Military men gave. Businessmen gave. Many people gave. One person, he gave his reasoning. His name was Jules Masserman. He was a psychoanalyst, a professor in the University of Chicago in USA. And before he mentions the great leader of history, he gives reasons that a great leader should fulfill three criteria. Number one, that leader Number one, should provide for the well-being of the lead. Number two, he should provide a social organization in which the people will feel secure. Number three, he should provide a set of beliefs. Then, Jules Masserman, he gives a name of few leaders. He says that Pasture and Salk were great leaders in the first sense. Gandhi and Confucius on one hand and Alexander, Caesar and Hitler on the other hand were leaders in the second sense. Some may be also in the third sense. Jesus and Buddha were only leaders in the third sense. But the greatest leader of humankind, which fulfilled all three senses, was Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Moses to a lesser extent. Jews Masserman, a psychoanalyst from the University of Chicago, USA, he says that pastures and salk maybe first sense first category they fulfilled they were leaders who provided the well-being of the lead Gandhi and Confucius on one hand and Alexander Caesar and Hitler on the other hand they were of the second sense that means they gave a social organization in which the people felt secured and some extent maybe second some set of beliefs they give Jesus and Buddha he says only in the third sense they give a set of belief but the greatest leader who fulfills in all three categories according to Jews Masserman provides the well-being of the lead provides a social organization which people feel secure provide a set of beliefs is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and Moses to a lesser extent maybe I believe maybe I think so Jews Masserman was a Jew so he put Moses also and fulfilling Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse number 18 that prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is like Moses peace be upon him and Jesus peace be upon him is unlike Moses peace be upon him there was a book written by a famous historian by the name of Michael H. Hart the topic of that book was 100 most influential persons in history right from Adam peace be upon him till the time the book was written a few years back and number one Michael H. Hart is not a Muslim maybe a Jew or a Christian he puts number one 
the most influential human being in the world. He places Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jesus, number three. And he says, Jesus and Moses, their influence put together is nowhere compared to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him alone. George Bernard Shaw, he says, that if a man was to assume the dictatorship, he talks about Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a man, if he assumes the dictatorship of this modern world, he will succeed in solving the problems of humankind and he would give the much needed peace and security to this world. He's talking on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to become a dictator of the modern world, he would give the solution to the problems of humankind and would give it peace and security which is much needed. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Kaf, chapter number 46, verse number 10, say, if this book, the glorious Quran, is from Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you reject it, after a messenger from the Bani Israel, from the children of Israel, testifies to it, he believes in it and you are arrogant, you are unjust. Allah guides not the unjust. I would like to end my talk with the quotation of the Goddess Quran, Surah Kawsar, chapter number 108, verse number 1 to 3, which says, Inna aataina kal kawsar, fasal lili rabbika wanhar, inna shaniya kawal aftar. To thee, to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Allah Almighty says, to thee, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have granted the font of abundance. So, turn to thy Lord in prayer and sacrifice. And anyone who hated thee, anyone who hates Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he would be cut off from all future hopes. Alhamdulillah, now we come to the second part of the program, which is the more interesting part of the program, that is the open question answer session. Here, you are most welcome to ask any questions on the topic, Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Bible. There are two microphones that have been set for asking questions. One for the gents on my right, and one for the ladies on my left. There are certain rules and regulations to be followed before we have the question answer session. Point number one, for the Muslims, ask questions related to the topic. Muhammad, peace be upon him in the Bible. Please ask one question at a time. If you have a second question, you can go behind the queue and wait for your second chance. Before you pose the question, mention your name and your profession so that I will be in a better position to reply. Please keep your question brief. The question should be in two or three sentences. If it's more than that, it becomes a mini lecture. This is a question answer time, not a lecture time. We would first give opportunity to our non-Muslim friends, brothers and sisters, the Christian brothers and sisters, our non-Muslim brothers and sisters, that if they have any questions, they would be given the first opportunity. Because today, the non-Muslims, the Christians, they are our guests of honor. And as far as the non-Muslims are concerned, they can ask questions on the topic, they can ask questions out of the topic also. They can ask any questions on Islam and comparative religion, on Islam, on Christianity, on Hinduism, on the Quran, on the Bible, on Hindu scriptures, any question. For non-Muslims, they need not restrict to the topic of the lecture. But for Muslims, they have to restrict themselves to the topic of the lecture. First, we'll only allow the non-Muslims to ask questions. After the non-Muslims' questions have been exhausted, then we'll give opportunity, if time permits, to questions from the Muslims. 
I would request the volunteers that if there are any non-Muslims waiting in the queue, give them the first opportunity, get them in front of the queue, and after the non-Muslims finish, then the Muslims can be given a chance. And I request the non-Muslim, this is the opportunity. Normally, after religious talk, you don't have a question-answer session. You hardly have. Here, you have an opportunity to ask questions, to clarify your doubts. You don't have to agree with me. You can disagree with me. Come and put forth your question. This is the opportunity. You don't get it always. We will first take the question from the non-Muslim brother on my right. Yes, brother, your name, your profession, and your question. My name is Benjamin Kukwa Gokla, a student of Eagle Eye Media Film Academy. My first question is, you said um, when Jesus Christ died, um, rising up, he told the people that he is going to send, his father is going to send a comforter to them. But to what I believe or what I learned from church is that he was going to send the Holy Spirit down onto them. So I just want to know from you that what do you people believe it is? The brother asked the question that when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I will send you a comforter when he goes, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. That's what the church says. What is my view? Brother, I gave the reply to this in my talk. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I will pray to my father to send you a comforter who will abide with you forever. Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse 26 says, But when the comforter comes, who I will send from my father, he will testify me. Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. The criteria for the comforter to come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should go. Only after he goes will he send the comforter. If you say the comforter was the Holy Spirit, we already know from the Bible that the Holy Spirit was there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came onto this earth. Before he was born. The Holy Spirit was there in the womb of Elizabeth. The Holy Spirit was also there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was being baptized. So this prophecy cannot refer to the Holy Spirit. It refers to no one but the last and final messenger prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Brother, do you believe that there's one God? Yes, please, I have a second question. Second question, okay, brother. Yeah, um, there's one thing um, in the religion that when you are non-Christian and you want to marry a Muslim woman, uh, it is said that you ought to switch your religion before you can get married to the woman. So, why is it so? Brother, ask the question that if a Christian man wants to marry a Muslim woman, he has to change the religion. Today morning, in Accra, I was asked that when a Christian woman marries a Muslim man, the Christian woman need not change the religion, correct? This is what the question was. Because the verse of the Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 5, lawful for you from this day are the women of ahl kitab in marriage. When a Christian woman marries a Muslim man, Whatever she believes in all the prophets from Adam, peace be upon him, till Jesus, peace be upon him, the Muslims believe in them all. So all the prophets who she believes in, she does not have to reject any. And the Muslims respect all the prophets. But when a Muslim girl marries a Christian man, the Muslims believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him also, and the Christians don't believe. So that means when she marries in a family of Christianity, they do not believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so she will not be comfortable. But according to me, the Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 221, it says that do not marry unbelieving women until they believe. A believing woman who is a slave woman is far superior than an unbelieving woman even if she allows you. So you cannot marry a non-Muslim until she becomes a Muslim. And according to me, it's also mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 72. Lakat kafra lazina kalu inna laha huwal masyub nu marima. They are doing kuf, they are blaspheming those who say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is Allah. That means the Quran says, many Christians say Jesus is God, it's kuf, it's blaspheming. That means one place the Quran says you can marry. The girl from the Ali Kitab, Jew or a Christian, 
One place says you cannot marry a mushrik, one who worships somebody else as God. Chapter 5, verse 72 says, the Christians say that Jesus is God with his shirk. Who can you marry? The reply is given in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 110. That woman, Ahl al-Kitab, lakana khair allahum. Min humul mu'minuna wa aksaromul fasikun. If the people of the book had faith, it would have been better for them. Among them, there are some who are believers, they are mu'min. But the majority are poverty transgressors. That means you can only marry those Christians who believe in one God. Not the Christian girls who believe in three in one, who believe Jesus is God. It is wrong. You can only marry those Christians who believe God is one and does not believe Jesus is God, who believe Jesus is the messenger of God. Brother, I would like to ask you. But is it, please, is it possible that a non-Christian would marry a Muslim? It's not permitted. A Christian cannot marry a Muslim because the Christian believes Jesus is God. It is shirk. It is the biggest sin in Islam. Allah says in Surah Maryam, chapter number 19, verse number 88 to 92, وَقَالُوا تَقَذُ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَى And they say, Allah most gracious has begotten a son. لَقَدْ جِيتُمْ شَيْيًا إِدَّا Indeed, they have put forth a thing most monstrous. Anyone says that Allah has begotten a son, it is the biggest abuse you can give to Almighty God. وَقَالُوا تَقَذُ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَى لَقَدْ جِيتُمْ شَيْيًا إِدَّا تَقَذُ السَّمَوَاتُ يَتَفَتَنَّ مِنُ If the sky had feeling, the sky would have burst open. وَطَنِ شَكُ الْأَرْضُ The earth would have split open. وَتَخِرُ الْجِبَالُ حَدَّى And the mountains would have fallen down to utter ruin. If anyone says that Allah has begotten a son, it is the biggest abuse you can give to Allah. The sky would split open. The earth would have split open. The mountains would fall down to utter ruin. That's the reason anyone who says Jesus is God, it is shirk. It is prohibited. It's a sin. That's the reason no Christian can marry a Muslim. Any Christian who says Jesus is God, you cannot marry. But if the Christian girl says that Jesus is not God, the messenger of God, and she believes in one God, then no problem. Hope that answers the question. Brother, do you believe there is one God? Sure. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. MashaAllah. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. MashaAllah. That means they're Muslim. If you believe that God is one, and if you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, these are the minimum two things required for a person to enter into the fold of Islam. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Would you like to say it in Arabic? What do you say in English? That there's no one worthy of worship except God, except Allah. And that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Yes. Anyone is forcing you? No. You're doing out of your own free will? Yes. Okay, I'll say it in Arabic and you repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadal. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. There is none worthy of worship. There is none worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad. Is the messenger. Is the messenger. And servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. MashaAllah, you have become a Muslim and may Allah, inshallah, grant you Jannah. May you grant you paradise. May you get the best in this world and the Akhirah. I would like to give you a copy of the translation of the Quran. Can you come please on the stage? My name is Tangwa Moses, an engineering student from KNUSD. I must say thank you very much for the work you are doing, and I wish you all the best in your mission. Please, in your lecture, you made mention that you believe in Jesus Christ, that he was, listen, born miraculously. He gave life to the dead. And I must say, all the religions say man must die once, before the said judgment day. If Jesus gave life to this man, was it just to show off because the man is no more living again? So why should Jesus give life to the person so that the person will die again? Meaning the person died twice. So was it just to show off 
or what was it? Or he's still living. He didn't die again. The brother asked a very good question that we Muslims believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, gave life to the dead. So if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, gave life to the dead, a person dies only once. So did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, give life to the dead to show off? Why did he do it? I agree with you, a person dies only once. Quran says in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 185, Every soul shall have a taste of death. And Quran says, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Bismillah, wake up in the name of Allah, and he gave life to the dead. The Bible says that. But all the miracles done by all the prophets of God, right from start till Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were done by Almighty God. They were not done by the Prophet himself, but they were done by Almighty God. When Moses, peace be upon him, when he parted the sea, that miracle was done by Almighty God to prove to the followers that he is a messenger of God. And you can see this when you read the Bible. And when you know, once Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when a person dies and two sisters go to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tell him that, please save my brothers. So he prays to Almighty God that you listen to me. He cries, you are the one who can save him. Let this cup pass away from me. He's praying to Almighty God. That me asking God to give back life to that man. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is praying to Almighty God that when the life was given to the dead, it was given by Almighty God. So all the miracles that were done, they were done by Almighty God. And Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was a messenger. So all the miracles that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did, Moses, peace be upon him, did, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did, these miracles are signs of Almighty God given so that his followers will understand he is a messenger of God. And this is mentioned in the Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you witness to it. A man. It's mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. E men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him and you witness to it. That means all these miracles God did just to prove that he was a messenger of God. That doesn't make that person God. That doesn't make that person superior. So all the miracles that were done by messengers were done by Almighty God as a sign to show that he is a messenger of God. Hope that answers the question, brother. I mean, the person died twice. That person died twice. Miracle means exception to the rule. And please, um, Jesus, Jesus asked God for something in the Bible, which God didn't also do. Sorry? The night before Jesus was crucified in the Bible, Jesus went into the garden and prayed so that God could have changed things. You could see, the Bible says that he sweat. Even on the cross, you could see that it wasn't wearing thin. But Jesus, God didn't do that for Jesus at that time. So I don't see it like Jesus will say, oh, come out of death. Then God did it there. But Jesus went into the garden, prayed, God didn't do. Which is not a consistent thing in Jesus' life because not all the things in his life he was able to do. Well, in his life? That, I mean, he asked God in the garden the day before he was crucified. Yes, he I know that. For things to change. But nothing happened. He fulfilled the thing. What God said. First, I'll answer your first question, then I'll come to your second. Your first question is, did the man die twice? Yes. The miracles are things which are outside the natural thing. When Moses, peace be upon him, parted the sea, for the sea to part is not natural. It becomes the miracle. Correct. So similarly, when Jesus gave life to the dead, a human being dies only once. When Jesus gave life to the dead, he comes back to life. Miracle done by Almighty God. For example, a human being is born from a father and mother, right? Yes. Sir. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born miraculously without male intervention. It's a miracle from God. That does not make Jesus God. Some Christians say, no, no, no. See, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, had no father, so he's God. 
So the reply to that is given in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse number 59. The similitude of Jesus in front of Allah is like Adam, peace be upon him. He was created from dust and said, Be and it was. If you say that Jesus is God because he had no father, then Adam, peace be upon him, is a greater God. He had no mother and no father. Please, excuse me, I'm not a Christian. Wait, what wait, I am I'm, saying, brother, I have not Christian. answered your question. Yeah. If you ask a question, you should wait for the reply. When you ask a question, you wait for the reply. After I finish the reply, then you can talk. Correct? You have to follow rules and regulation. Okay, sorry. So when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, with the will of God, gave life to the dead, it was a miracle. That person will die twice. Coming to prophet, Jesus, peace be upon him. You rightly said, in the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, before he was put on the cross, he sweats and he prays to God. Let this cup pass away from me. Correct? He prays. So what happens? God saves him. God saves him. When he can give life to the dead, to a common man, and when he cries to God, can't God save him? God saves him. That's the reason he doesn't die on the cross. According to the Bible, Jesus Christ's peace be upon him did not die on the cross. And I will prove it to you. If you read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38, People come and ask Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, that please show us signs and miracles. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, The son of Jonah. Evil. Brother, will you listen to me? Do you understand English? Understand You're asking the question, I'm giving the reply, again you're coming in between. Please, please, I was just trying to say, I've looked at your was Christ really crucified? And I know it. But if you knew, you wouldn't have asked this question. No, but you didn't you hear have, my question. Brother, let me finish the answer. If you have heard my question, you would have become a Muslim by now. If you would have heard all my lectures, by now you have been giving the Shahada. I respect your speeches a lot. I respect Sorry? your lectures. I respect your lectures and I like it. That's Very good. I'll I come to it later on. My respects will come to it later on. First, I'll give the reply. If Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, cried to Almighty God one day before he was put on the cross, what did God do? God saved him. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12. Verse number 38 to 40. When people say, show us a sign, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Ye evil and adulterous generation, seek it thee after a sign. No sign shall be given to you but the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, every Christian knows what is the sign of Jonah. You go to book of Jonah, one and a half sides. You know that Almighty God asked prophet Jonah, to go to Joppa and deliver the message. But Prophet Jonah thinks that the people of Joppa will not listen to the message. He goes to Nineveh. Now when he's going to Nineveh by the ship, a storm comes at sea. And it was the superstition at that time that if a storm comes, it's because someone had disobeyed the master. So they normally draw lots. Who's the one who disobeyed the master? So Jonah being a prophet of God, he volunteers that I'm the one who disobeyed the master. So because he volunteers, they don't have to break his arm or leg or tie his leg. He volunteers, so they throw him overboard. Now when they throw Jonah overboard, was he dead or alive? He was alive, according to the Bible. I'm asking you according to the Bible and according to your knowledge. In a storm, when a human being is thrown into a sea, normal human being, when he's thrown into the raging storm in the sea, he ought to die. As far as Jonah is concerned, Jonah was dead or alive. Dead or alive when he was thrown into the sea in the storm? Dead or alive? He was alive according to the Bible. Alive according to the Bible. Very good. A fish comes and gobbles him up. If a fish eats up or gobbles a man, he ought to die. Was Jonah dead or alive? Alive still. Alive according still. to the Bible. Miracle of a miracle of a miracle. He was thrown. He was alive. In the raging storm, he ought to die. He does not die alive. A fish comes and gobbles him up. He ought to die. He does not die alive. A miracle of a miracle. Three days and three nights, the fish takes him around the sea. Out of suffocation, a man ought to die. Was Jonah dead or alive? Alive, according a miracle. to the Bible. According to the Bible. Not according to Dr. Zakir Naik. Miracle of a miracle of a miracle. From the belly of the fish, Prophet Jonah prays to Almighty God. While he was praying, was he dead or alive? Alive according to the Bible. Alive according to the Bible. A miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. After three days, the fish vomits him out on the shore. Dead or alive? 
alive according alive, to the bible according to the bible so according to the bible it's a miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle jesus christ peace be upon him said no sign shall be given to you but the sign of jonah for as jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth so if you read the bible if you understand the bible jesus christ peace be upon him was put on the cross on friday it was known that the jews don't crucify on a sabbath day on saturday so before it becomes sunset they were in hurry to get him down now when they get him down they put him in the sepulcher in the sepulcher according to the bible was jesus dead or alive he was, was alive. jesus christ peace be upon him dead or alive in where on the cross or in the tomb in the tomb in the tomb they say he was resurrected according to the bible brother i'm asking you a question when jesus christ peace be upon him was put in the sepulcher i'm asking the question was jesus christ peace be upon him according to the bible dead or alive they say he died on the cross and he was resurrected i'm asking you in the sepulcher i'm asking you what's your name you said i stay in ghana i'm asking your name you're saying i live in ghana brother do you understand english i'm asking a simple question in english in the sepulcher in the tomb jesus christ peace be upon him was dead or alive outside i'm not bothered in the tomb was he dead or alive i'm not a christian i don't know so brother what are you i don't know unless you tell me if you're not a christian what are you i'm not religious i'm still looking for religion oh so you're looking you for religion I'm okay convert. so do you believe in the bible to be the word of god I if don't you don't believe. believe then why should i quote the bible i don't believe if you don't believe bible to be the word of god i'll quote to you quran which is the word of god even i don't believe bible is the word of god to me also if you don't believe bible is the word of god even i don't believe bible is the word of god there are in the bible some portions which can be the word of god there are words of prophets there are words of historians there are contradictions there is pornography but let me complete my answer and you're right according to the bible jesus christ peace be upon him he was alive so that's the reason when you're asking me from the bible that before he was put on the cross he prays to almighty god so god saves him because he prays to almighty god he does not die on the cross he's brought down alive and in the tomb is alive he fulfills the prophecy of the sign of jonah that's the reason jesus christ peace be upon him wasn't crucified he did not die on the cross he was saved and almighty god raised him up alive brother do you believe do you believe there is one god i believe mashallah i believe do you believe that jesus is god i don't believe because in my african spirituality i believe in god but the concept of god that is brought to me is what i don't believe very good even i do not believe jesus is god brother one more question third question do you believe prophet muhammad is the messenger of god yeah historically i know prophet muhammad existed no do you believe that prophet muhammad is the messenger of god i know he's a messenger of god mashallah so if you believe god is one and if you believe muhammad is the messenger of god that means you're a muslim no but you see what is any... about peace <laughs> no the minimum two criteria dr naik the minimum two criteria required for any human being to be a muslim is he has to believe that almighty god is one and there is no one worthy of worship except almighty god which you believe yes, and sir. the second is that prophet muhammad is the messenger of that god yeah so if you believe in these two things you become a minimum level of muslim you can become more and more practicing later on for example if you on admission if you take admission into a school suppose the school is st peter school the school i studied from you become a st peter right that means you become a student of that school now whether you are in first standard second standard third standard 10th standard that is it so if you take admission you are a student of that school so for anyone to be a muslim minimum two things that he should do is he should agree god is one and no one deserves worship except almighty god and second is you should believe that prophet muhammad is the messenger if you believe in these two things then you become a minimum level of muslim then you can get more knowledge you can keep on becoming better and better and better you can go first standard second standard third standard 10th standard bachelor masters phd that's later so according to me you are a muslim but would you like to say it in arabic i'm an african conscious being on it sorry that's right. i'm a conscious being on it 
you're conscious of a natural being a natural human being on it yes you are a human being that believes almighty god is one yeah believe prophet muhammad is the messenger of almighty yeah. god yeah so according to me you are a muslim okay that's from your view that's no from that your is view. the view yes of course my view only yeah and even from your view because you believe is god muslim means a person who submits his will to god what is the meaning of muslim i told in my talk anyone who submits his will to almighty god and acquires peace by submitting his will to god is a muslim so you have submitted your will to god you believe there is one god correct i believe and you believe prophet muhammad is a messenger yeah i believe he that means you are a minimum messenger. muslim you can be more practicing by following better better things other things about almighty god but the minimum thing that you should follow of almighty god is believe is one and believe prophet muhammad is a messenger i believe you have just entered the fold of islam i'm asking you the question you said in english yeah that there is no one worthy of worship except almighty god and you told that prophet muhammad is a messenger of god yeah i am asking you would you like to say it in arabic to to say same thing what you said in english would you like to say it in arabic <laughs> i can't speak arabic no i will help you because that is the language of the last and final revelation i would like to speak you like to say it i would like to say it okay is anyone forcing you no 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 you're doing out of your own it's free will it's something i believe if you're i you're doing out believe, of your own free will yeah it's something you believe I muhammad believe. is the messenger peace be upon him your own free I will i believe he has assisted and he no one is giving you his. money no 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 okay i'll say it in arabic and you repeat it okay ashhadu ashhadu allah allah ilaha ilaha illa allah illa allah wa ashhadu wa ashhadu anna anna muhammadan muhammad abduhu abduhu wa rasuluhu wa rasul i bear witness i bear witness that that there is none worthy of worship there is none worthy of worship except allah except allah and and i bear witness i bear witness that that prophet muhammad prophet muhammad is the messenger is the messenger and servant of allah and servant of allah mashallah you are a muslim may allah <laughs> subhanahu wa taala give you good Amen. in this world and the year after i pray to almighty god see once you accept it and you become a muslim all your previous sins have been forgiven i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala to grant you good in this world and the akhira and i want you to read more and more so that you understand this religion better yeah i read a lot i read and, a lot and i want you to see more of my dvds i ask some of the volunteer to give you books i've got three books here in kumasi i would ask the volunteer brother abdul aziz to give this brother three of my booklets and i would also like to present to you a copy of the quran can some volunteer get me a copy of the quran here please can some volunteer get me a translation of the quran please please keep some copies of the translation of the quran on my table yes brother can you come and take the translation please The brother said that may Allah bless you, and I want to thank you, brother, for saying that, because once you accept Islam, all your previous sins have been washed away. And I request you to pray for me also. And he said, may Allah bless you, and I'd like to thank you. May Allah guide you more to the truth, and may Allah help you guide your family members and friends to the truth, and even guide this great country Ghana to peace, serenity, and to the truth. Can we have the second question? Is there any sister, non-Muslim sister, would like to ask a question? Yes, sister. Please, I'm Carl Maslin, a student at Sunyani Polytechnic. Please, I would like to know why Muslim ladies always cover their hair 
And then the second question is, why they clean their private parts after they shit or after they urinate? If I heard your question correctly, sister, you said, why do Muslim women cover the head, correct? That's your question. Yes, please. And why do they wash their private part after the unit? Yes, always. I will first answer your second question, then come to the first question. As far as washing the private part when they go for urination, that's done by Muslim men as well as Muslim women, both. Because we are hygienic. Because when we go for the call of nature, we put water on it so that there are no droplets remaining. I, as a medical doctor, you ask any medical doctor, they will tell you that what the body does not require, it comes out as an excreta or in urine. And these are very harmful for the body. So when you urinate, when you urinate, there are certain drops remaining. When you wash, when you put water, these droplets go away. So it becomes more hygienic and there are less chances of having itchiness and certain diseases in that part. So it is for hygiene and for medical reasons, sister. Regarding your first question, why do Muslim women cover the head? Why do Muslim women cover the hair? The reply is hijab has been prescribed in the Quran. But before the hijab for the women, Allah talks about hijab for the men. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nur chapter number 24 verse number 30, Say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. The moment a man looks at a woman, if any brazen thought, any unashamed thought comes, he should lower his gaze. The next verse speaks about the hijab for the woman. Surah Nur chapter number 24 verse number 31. Say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty. And display not a beauty except what appears off. And draw her veil, a head covering over her bosom, over her chest. And display not a beauty except in front of her husband, her sons, her fathers and a big list of mehram, the close relatives who she can't marry is given. There are basically six criteria for hijab. The first is the extent which differs between the man and the woman. For the man, it's from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and hands up to the wrist. Some scholars say that even the face should be covered. But normally, for a woman, a complete body should be covered, including the head and the hair, except the face and hands up to the wrist. The remaining five criteria are the same for the man and the woman. The second is, the clothes they wear, it should not be tight so that it reveals the figure. Third, it should not be transparent or translucent so that you can see through. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And sixth, it should not resemble that of the unbelievers. The reason why hijab has been prescribed is given in the Quran in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 59. Where Allah says, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, the overcoat, so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. So Islam prescribes the women to cover the head and put on the overcloak so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. I'd like to ask you a question. If there are two twin sisters, two twin sisters who are very beautiful, equally beautiful if they are walking down the streets of Kumasi in Ghana and one twin sister she is wearing the Islamic clothes complete body covered only part that is seen is the face and the hands up to the wrist the other twin sister she is wearing the western clothes you know mini skirt and shorts wearing a very low deep neck revealing more of the body than concealing and if both these twin sisters are walking down the streets of Kumasi and around the corner, there is a hooligan. There is a ruffian who's waiting for a catch, who's waiting to tease the girl. I'm asking you the question, sister. Will he tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab or will he tease the girl wearing the Western clothes? Please, sir, I prefer the lady in the Islamic hijab. Which girl will he tease? Will he tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab or tease the girl wearing the Western clothes? Please, sir, I prefer the lady wearing the Islamic hijab. He will tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab. Why? Yes, please. Why but? It's decent. I can't hear you. It's decent. It is decent. Yes, please. I See? didn't get the question well. No, my question was, if there are two twin sisters who are equally beautiful, very beautiful, walking down the streets of Kumasi, one is wearing the Islamic clothes completely covered, one twin sister, except the face is seen and the hands up to the wrist is seen. 
The other twin sister, she is wearing the western clothes, mini skirts and shorts, a top with a deep neck, low neck. Her body is revealed more than concealed. She is exposing more of her body than concealing. And if both the twin sisters are equally beautiful, walking down the streets of Kumasi, and if round the corner there is a hooligan, there is a ruffian who is waiting for a catch, who is waiting to tease a girl, I am asking the question, which girl will he tease? Will he tease the twin sister who is wearing the Islamic hijab, or will he tease the twin sister who is wearing the western clothes? Which girl will he tease? The one in the hijab. He will tease the girl wearing the hijab. Why, sister? Can you give me one good reason? Can you give me one good reason why will that man tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab? Only one reason I want. I will attack the one in the naked dress. One in the? Please, they will tease the one in the, naked, the short dress. Ah, correct. It's a simple question, simple answer. He will tease the girl wearing the shorts, the naked dress, because if you invite, then people will come. That's the reason, not only in the Quran, not only in Islam, even in Christianity, it is mentioned. Sister, are you a Christian? Yes, please. If you read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22, verse number 5, it says, The woman shall not wear clothes that will pertinent to a man, and a man will not wear clothes that will pertinent to a woman. All those who do, abomination of the law. It's mentioned in the first Timothy, chapter number 2, verse number 9. The woman should be dressed up with modesty, with shamefacedness and sobriety. They should not wear broided hair, or gold, or pearl, or costly array. It's mentioned in 1 Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number 5 and 6, that the woman that prophesieth and prayeth with the head uncovered, her head should be shaved off. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number 5 to 6, the woman that prayeth with the head uncovered, her head should be shaved off. Bible is more strict even than the Quran. Nowhere does the Quran say, nowhere does the Hadith of Prophet say that if a woman does not cover her head, her head should be shaved off. The Bible is more strict. Have you seen the photograph of Mother Mary? Have you seen the photograph of Mother Mary? Yes, please. Is the head covered or not? Covered. Why? For modesty. When you go to church, when you see the nuns, the nuns cover the head or not? Yes or no? They do cover their head. They cover. Why? Because Bible says that. So what Quran says, the same thing is mentioned in the Bible. For modesty, you have to wear the hijab. If you don't wear the hijab, there are chances that you shall be molested. There are chances you shall be raped. In Islam, if any man, after these rules and regulations has been done, rapes a woman, he gets capital punishment, death penalty. Many people say death penalty is a barbaric law, is a ruthless way of life. Do you know in America, the maximum number of rapes that take place in any country in the world, it's in America. According to the 2008 statistics of the National Survey of the Crime Victimization, 203,830 cases of rape took place and 16% were reported. That means every day, 3,590 cases of rape took place. Every 25 seconds, one rape is taking place in America. You know, I'm giving this talk since the past two hours. Already more than 200 rapes may have taken place since the time I'm giving a talk here. I'm asking you the question, if you implement the Islamic Sharia in USA, that every man when he looks at a woman, he should lower his gaze. If any unashamed thought comes, after that, the woman should wear the Islamic hijab, the complete body covered. The only part that is seen is the face and the hand of the rest. After that, if any man rapes a woman, capital punishment, death penalty, I'm asking you the question, will the rate of rape in USA, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? Please, it will decrease. It will decrease. It's a practical law. You implement the Sharia and you get results. That's the reason Islam is a religion which shows you a way how people will respect the woman. In the Western world, they talk about women's rights, but what are they doing? They're selling their daughters, they're selling their mothers, they're selling their sisters. You know, the Western society, talking about women's liberalization, is nothing but a disguised form of exploitation of a body, degradation of a honor, and deprivation of a soul. 
the Western society claiming to uplift the woman have degraded her to a status of concubine, to that of a mistress and society butterflies, which are mere tools in the hands of pleasure seekers and sex marketers, which are hidden behind the colorful screen of art and culture. What is the Western world doing? They are selling their daughters. In name of women's liberalization, what are they doing? In most of the advertisement, you'll find a woman. How many women ride motorcycle? But you'll find a woman in the motorcycle ad. I was told about a very famous ad of BMW. You know BMW? It's a very famous car. It's a very fast car. Someone told me in one of the ads, there is a young girl standing in front of the BMW car in a bikini. And the ad reads, test drive her now. Who, the girl or the car? Test drive her now. Who, the girl or the car? What is the Western world doing? They're selling their daughters. They're selling their mothers. They're selling their sisters. In Islam, we respect our mothers. We respect our daughters. We respect our wives. Islam has spoken about hijab to uplift the woman, to give her more status. Hope you agree with this. That if the woman is covered, she is more modest and she gets more respect. Do you agree with this, sister? Yes, please. I do. Sister, do you believe there is one God? Yes, please. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God? <laughs> do you believe Jesus Christ is God? Yes, I do. You believe? Yes, please. Sister, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. If any Christian, including you, can point out a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says, I am God or where he says worship me, I, Dr. Zakir Naik, am ready to accept Christianity now. I am not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers and sisters. I am ready to put my head on the guillotine. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I, with the finger of God, cast out devils. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, is a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. He never claimed divinity. It's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. E men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, not God. A man approved of God amongst you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. So when nowhere does the Bible says Jesus peace be upon him is God, so why do you believe he's God? Because the church says so. Do you believe in the Bible or do you believe in the church? I believe in the Bible. Where does the Bible say he's God? So someone has told you a lie. So now when you have come to know the truth, nowhere did Jesus say that he's God, peace be upon him. I have given you so many quotations. So yet do you believe he's God? See the brother who came earlier, he got convinced. He's seen my cassettes. He's seen my lectures. I'm asking you, yet do you believe Jesus is God? According to the Bible, Jesus Christ came to die for our sins and was crucified. <laughs> Sister, you said Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came to die for a sin and he was crucified. Yes. I told you earlier, sister, just before you, I proved that according to the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die on the cross. I told in the earlier answer. Did you listen to my answer, sister? Did you listen to my earlier answer? Please, I didn't hear you all. I quoted to you Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 40. That Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And we know Jonah was alive. Correct? 
Jonah was alive in the belly of the fish. So even Jesus Christ was alive, that means he did not die on the cross. Please, I'll be happy if you can please explain to me how Jesus Christ died. Ah. You are asking me to explain how Jesus Christ died. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die. So how can I explain to you died? As I told you, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that as Jonah, you know Prophet Jonah? As Prophet Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. When Jonah was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive? alive. Sister was alive. In the belly of the fish, was he dead or alive? Alive. Alive. When the fish vomits out Jonah, was he dead or alive? Alive. Alive, alive, alive. Miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Now when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was taken on from the cross and put in the sepulchre, in the tomb, was he dead or alive? Please, the question again. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. You told me Jonah was alive, correct? In the belly of the fish. Jesus Christ, after he was brought down from the cross, he was put in the sepulchre, in the heart of the earth. When he was put in the sepulchre in the heart of the earth, was he dead or alive? Alive. Alive. That means he did not die. So if he did not die, how can you say that Jesus Christ died for our sins? It's mentioned in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 18, verse number 20. The soul that sins shall die. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. Neither the son shall bear the iniquity of the father. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked turns and come back, he shall not die. So sin cannot be inherited according to the Bible. One human being cannot die for the sins of the other human being. Correct? So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die. So now do you believe that he is a prophet of God? There is no place in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, unequivocally says that he is God. Now do you believe that he is not God? Sister? I'm convinced. You're confused. I'm convinced. <laughs> you're convinced, mashallah. So you're convinced Jesus is not God? Yes, please. Do you believe he's messenger of God? I believe in messenger of God. Mashallah. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, please. That means you're a Muslim. Would you like to say it in Arabic? If anyone who believes that there is no one worthy of worship except one true God, Allah, and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That means you're a Muslim. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Yes, please. Is anyone forcing you to become a Muslim? Is someone forcing you? No. Are you doing out of your own free will? Yes. Is anyone giving you money? No one is giving me money. Okay. I say it in Arabic and you repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Allah. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa ashadu. Ma ashadu. Anna. Allah. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is none. There is none. Worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. Except okay. Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That. That Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, is the messenger and servant of God. And servant of God. Mashallah, you have become a Muslim, and I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to grant you Jannah. I pray to Allah to give you Jannah, to put you in paradise, and I pray to Allah to give you the best in this world and Amen. the year after. And once you have become a Muslim, all your previous sins have been washed away. Amen. And I pray to Almighty God that you read more of Islamic books, come closer to Islam, and you guide other peoples to Islam. Thank you very much, sister. Yes, please. Can we have the next question from the brother's side here, on my right? My name is Temi Dayo I am an architecture student in Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. My question is, is Jesus Christ the Son of God? The brother asked a question, is Jesus Christ the Son of God? 
what is the meaning of son of God? If you read the Bible, the Bible has got sons by the tons. Adam was son of God. David was son of God. Ephraim was son of God. Israel was son of God. Book of Romans chapter number 8 verse number 14 says, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. That means if you follow the commandment of Almighty God, you are a son of God, meaning you are a godly person, you are a saintly person. Verily, if you mean son of God means a person who follows the commandment of God, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, verily was the son of God, like was Adam, same was David, same was Ephraim, same was Israel. If you follow the commandment of God, you are a son of God. If I follow the commandment of God, I am son of God. But there are many Christians who say, no, 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 Dr. Zakir, he is not a normal son, he is the begotten son. And they quote, Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Brother, do you know what is the meaning of the word begotten? No. Begotten. It is the function of lower animal of sex. You know, having sex. How can you attribute such an action to God? That's the reason. If you read the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate denominations, they say that this word begotten is an interpolation, is a fabrication, is a concoction, and they've thrown it out of the Bible. So only calling Jesus the son of God, meaning a godly person, I've got no objection at all. He followed the commandment of God. He's most verily in that context, the son of God. But he's not God. Do you understand, brother? Yes. Because there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. Brother, do you believe Jesus is God? Um, no. MashaAllah. Do you believe in the prophet of God? I am not fully convinced. No, do you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is prophet of God? Yes. You believe? Yes. Do you believe God is one? Yes. I gave a talk on Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Bible. Do you believe prophet Muhammad is the prophet of God? I'm not fully convinced. I still have to. Okay, which part of my lecture you weren't convinced with? I give a full lecture of one hour, 20 minutes. One hour, 20 minutes. I showed so many prophecies from the Bible that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to send to you, but he cannot bear them now, for he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you to all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he shall speak, he shall glorify me. So, brother, do you believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the Prophet of God? Um, when, when I say I'm not fully convinced, I mean I, I have to go and read and see, see about it, basically. Okay, I request you, inshallah, go home, read, but don't waste too much time. This life is short. If you say I will take 10 years, you don't know whether you live or not. So I request you go back home, read again. You can hear my lectures. You can go on the YouTube and type Dr. Zakir Naik about Christianity, about Islam, about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And inshallah, I pray to Allah to give you hidayah, to give you guidance, so that you come to the straight path. Amen. Thank you, brother. Right. Yes, brother. Your name, your profession, and your question. My name is Magbunsu. A student of T.I. Ahmadiyya Senior High School. And in your statement, you made mention of, you said Muhammad praised Jesus Christ not less than 25 times in the Quran. But I'm a little bit doubtful. I want to know the truth by seeing it clearly from the Quran. But this is the case that Muslims do not allow any Christian to touch the Quran. So how then should I know the truth from the Quran? Mashallah, brother asked a very good question. He said, I told in my lecture and the question and session that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, 25 times by name in the Quran. But the Muslims don't allow him to touch the Quran. These Muslims are ignorant. You have to forgive these Muslims who don't allow you to touch the Quran. Because the Quran is not only revealed for the Muslims or the Arabs, the Quran is revealed for the whole of humankind. 
the Quran says in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 1, we have revealed to thee, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to lead humankind from darkness to light. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 52, here is a message for mankind. Let them take warning therefrom. Let them know there is one God. Let the men of understanding take heed. The Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 185, Ramadan was the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance for humankind, as a criteria to judge right from wrong. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Zumur chapter 39 verse number 41 that we have revealed to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the Quran to instruct the humankind. So brother the Quran is for the whole of humankind and I would give you a copy of the Quran and you can read the Quran and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he dictated letters to the non-Muslim kings asking them to accept Islam and he dictated verses of the Quran. Surah Imran chapter 3 verse number 64 Come to common terms as between us and you Many of the non-Muslim kings accepted Islam Some of them tore the letter Some of them even trampled it beneath their feet So when Prophet Muhammad could give verses of the Quran Why can't I give to the non-Muslim? Brother, I would like to ask you Do you believe there is one God? Yes, please Do you believe Jesus is God? Peace be upon him Do you believe Jesus is God or do you believe he is messenger of God? Actually, a messenger of God. Very good, mashallah. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? I gave a talk of 1 hour 20 minutes. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Please, that one, I have to make my own research. Too. Sorry? I'm not, I'm not yet convinced about it. Which part of my lecture are not convinced? See, research you have to do. Fine. Tell me which part do you want to do research? I'll help you. Oh, please. That one, I take, it will take a lot... A little, more, a little bit more time. Little more time, I can give you time. I love you, brother. Brother, I love you. I know that. Sorry? Yes, please. I love you. I love and you I want you to come to the truth. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, seek ye the truth and the truth shall free you. I gave a lecture of one hour, 20 minutes. Proving from the Bible that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been prophesied in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, also told about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, do you believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Please, that one, unless I read from the Quran to confess before I go. I would like to give you a copy of the Quran. You can come on the stage. I'll give you a copy of the Quran and inshallah I want you to read and get convinced. Come on the stage, please, brother. Is there any question from the non-Muslim from the sister's side? No, please. Yes, brother, most welcome. Okay, my name is Kofi Abrifa Clement. I'm a senior high school graduate. And um, unfortunately, I was not able to come early. Actually, Friday I was here and I, was, I didn't get the announcement. So I was called from bed right now. But I have been following you most often on Peace TV. So I believe that um, on that prerogative, I will give some questions based on your subject matter, uh, the few I have followed you concerning on Peace TV. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I looked and I know that the topic you brought forth was Muhammad in view of the Bible, like Muhammad as written in the Bible. And you have listened to you most often, and you have asked for a very simple, straightforward scripture that confesses the Godship of Jesus Christ. And you've even um, said that if you are convinced, you are going to be a Christian. I'm also here with all genuineness of heart that if your answer also comes and satisfies the questions, I also become a Muslim. 
First of all, um, your apologetics is very powerful. And this is the case I want to raise. For you to ask a question that um, scriptures should be given, talking about the deity of Jesus Christ as God. I believe that you have taken the case from scriptural point of view to philosophical argument. Um, you've quoted a lot of scriptures and a lot of scriptures you have brought forth. And one of the scriptures you quoted somewhere in the book of Acts chapter 3 um, about when Peter was addressing the people and it spoke of the man Jesus approved of God. I know you've quoted that scripture as well. But you see, you were asking of scriptures in where Jesus himself made a statement that he is God. But you went beyond the mark and quoted things other people have said about him. That has actually opened the argument. Now you have taken it from the first person who is testifying about himself to what other people are saying about himself. Then it will mean that I'm not only allowed to talk about what he alone has said about himself. But also, I'm also allowed to make references in respect to what other people have made about him. But let me now write it down here. You see, this is, uh, I stand to reason, the first question I wanted to ask you is, which um, sect of Christians do you actually listen to? Because if you come to Christianity, like I attend the House of Faith uh, ministry. I, I'm also in the KFI. So uh, every kind of Christian sect, you realize that it is the knowledge that actually defines why they are there as such particular Christian sect. And there is a saying that the abuse of a philosophy, as you know, does not nullify the philosophy. So um, I will want to first of all know... Brother, 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 this is a question answer time, not a lecture time. If you heard the rules and regulations very clearly, the question should be posed in two or three sentences. If it's more than that, it's a short speech. The speech is over. You came late. The lecture is over. Now don't give a lecture. I know the background. You have already spoken for two, three minutes. You already spoke 10, 20 sentences. And yet you have not posed the question. Question should have a question mark. I have read many Christian Bibles. King James Version, New International Version, Jehovah's Witness, Due Version, many. You ask the question. Simple question, two or three sentences should have a question mark. That's it. Pose your question. No salute. Question. Thank you. Um, Most welcome. Um, for the question mark, I know I can't write it, but I know I'll pose it. Um, but the case is this. When Jesus talks about the Spirit, he said that he's going to send as comforter someone just like him, according to what he said in the book of John. Now, if you read the book of John chapter 20, verses number 22, the Bible said he came and he breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Spirit. I've heard that you said that um, the Holy Spirit was there before. But the, this is how we understand it in our dogma. The case is like you being a mathematics teacher. I know you are capable. You being a mathematics teacher, you have a lot of topics you can teach. You can teach binomial, polynomial. But all of them is under mathematics. Brother, do you understand English? Yeah. <laughs> Two or three sentences. You have come here to give a speech. I think you're a teacher. Don't give a lecture here. Two or three sentences with a question mark. You don't have to write your question. What is your name? It's a question mark. It's a question. I cannot write. I cannot see. Simple. If you don't ask a question, I'll give an, another person a chance. You are wasting your time and wasting everyone's time. Pose a question. All your wasting time. I'm being very kind. Don't test my patience. I love you, brother. I love you. I love you. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Seek ye the truth, and the truth shall free you. You want to go around the bushes, 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 words, 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 without question. If you want to preach, you can hire this hall tomorrow and give an advertisement. People will come to listen to you, those who want to come. Don't waste that. I know about 10,000 people here. Don't waste that time, please. Don't cause harm to all these people. 
They have come to listen to me, not to you. You pose a question, I'll give the reply. Only two or three sentences. If you pose more than two or three sentences, I will go to the next question. Don't say anything extra, please. Start. So, so in John 20, 22, he said, receive ye the Spirit. So those who were there at that time received. So I want to know why you think um, it goes beyond that point to the Prophet Muhammad. Thank you. Brother asked a question in John 20, 22. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that receive ye the Spirit. But this is not talking about the comfort, the different spirit is different. Receive the spirit, that means the spirit was there. This is another verse of the Bible. I didn't quote John chapter 20 verse 22. I quoted Gospel of John chapter number 14 verse number 16. I will pray to the Father to send you a comfort who will abide with you forever. Gospel of John chapter number 15 verse number 26. But when the comforter will come, who I will send from my Father, he will show you things to come. He shall testify me. Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 7 Nevertheless I tell you the truth It is expedient for you that I go away For if I go not away the comforter will not come For if I depart shall I send him You have gone to gospel of John chapter 20 I am quoting gospel of John chapter 14 chapter 15 and chapter 16 You are going to chapter 20 well, yeah, What are you talking? Gospel of John chapter 20 is talking about the Spirit. I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about Comforter. Holy Spirit is not Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Comforter is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Did you hear my lecture? I said I was late because I didn't know. But you said you heard on the television. Didn't you say that? Yeah, I said that. I've spoken many times on okay, TV. Then I can pose the question better now. So that means Spirit is different. Prophet Muhammad is different. And Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, said... In the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Who is this person? The Holy Spirit. Brother, can you understand English? Yes. Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse number 7 said, that it is expedient for you that I go away. If I go away, the comfort shall come. Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came into the world. So this person cannot be the Holy Spirit. You say, if you convince me, I'll become a Muslim. What language do you understand? English? Y yes, English. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit was there in the womb of Elizabeth before John the Baptist was born. And John the Baptist came before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, correct? Yes, please. Holy Spirit was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was being baptized. Yes? Yes, So this please. comforter cannot mean Holy Spirit. Yet you say Holy Spirit, you are going in circles. That's why I was bringing the issue of mathematics. That not mathematics, I'm talking about Bible. I don't want to learn mathematics no. here. Um, and not from you specially. We use analogy to actually create a statement. I believe that for you to make... In mathematics, we use analogy to create uh, a statement. Which um, mathematics are you talking about? I, I said which, in, in which, life... Which mathematics are you talking about? Where does it say you use the analogy to make a statement? Which um, mathematic book says that? I'm asking you a question. Which mathematic book says that? Anyway, that, use analogy that was make... a different statement. That was not con concerned to mathematics. I'm asking you which book says that you use an analogy to make a statement in mathematics. No, Have I you studied mathematics? I've studied mathematics a little. Which book says that you use an analogy to make a statement? Okay, that statement was not part of the mathematics. That it was is a wrong. different statement. You made a mistake, correct? No, it was not a mistake. I was making different statements. You said in mathematics you use an analogy to make a statement. They were not joint statement. statements. You do not do it in mathematics. You made a mistake, yes or no? Please, they were not joint statements. I, it was like you making... said in mathematics to use an analogy to make a statement. Sir, is it, it ab... right or is it wrong? Sir, in language, we are not able to apply comma and full stop, so you may not have known. But I was not making the same statement. I was like answering the second question you asked when I talked about mathematics. What are you doing? Uh, sorry. There's no comma. When you speak, it is understood whether comma is there or not. You don't have to mention it. Only when you write, you have to mention it. When you say, understood whether it's a comma or a question mark. You have posed the question, I've given the answer. You have posed the question on Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse number 22, and I answered you. The answer is over. You didn't understand it, it's your problem. 
You asked the question on Gospel of John chapter 20, verse 22. I gave you the answer. That is the Holy Spirit. It is not Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the comfort in which I gave the talk. If you want to know more, you go and hear my lecture on the YouTube, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Bible. And then when you finish, then you can write to me on the email. Okay, brother? Thank you. You're most welcome. Can we have the next question from the sister? Any non-Muslim brother? Yeah. How many non-Muslim brothers are there? Two more. Okay, brother, most welcome. My name is um, Benjamin, and um, I'm a carpenter by profession. Um, I'm a lover of music, and my Muslim friend says um, any music with instruments, it's not good. I want to know why it is so or any explanation to that statement the brother asked the question that his muslim friends tell him that any music with instrument is not correct why our prophet Muhammad said he prohibited the use of musical instrument except the duff the duff is you know one side open drum it's not a drum it's a duffly the reason is that when you play music there are chances that you can get deviated you get carried away in poetry, etc., you get carried away. They start praising people and they go beyond the limits. So music takes you away many a times. You hear in the songs, pop songs, beat it, beat it. What does it mean? You don't understand yet people are repeating it, correct? Funky town, what funky town? It doesn't have any meaning only. So when people hear music and they start singing, they say things which have no meaning and they enjoy. It takes you away from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you away from worship of Almighty God. That is the reason it is not allowed in Islam. Brother, but these are all minor issues. The main issue today we are discussing is about Almighty God. Do you believe there is one God? Yeah, I believe in one God. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. Very good. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God? I believe he is the messenger of God. MashaAllah. So if you believe that there is no one worthy of worship except Almighty God, and you believe that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, that means you're a Muslim. These are minor issues whether music is allowed or not. The main issue is that if you believe there's one God, and if you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, you enter into the fold of Islam. Would you like to say it in Arabic? I came to ask questions. Please, can you let me finish my questions before? No, your question is, I already answered your question. Didn't I answer your question? You asked me, why is musical instrument not allowed. That's, I give you the answer. Um, that's the first question. I have a different... Oh, so you have one more question? Yeah, I have more questions. Ah, so I should know that. I cannot read people's mind. Okay. How many questions do you have, brother? Um, should we... How many more questions do you have? About four. Four? Yeah. <laughs> Normally, we ask one question at a time, and for next question, go behind the queue. If it's short questions, I'll take rather than go behind the queue. Yes, brother, what's the next question? Um... Believing um, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God makes you a Muslim. What about believing Jesus Christ is the messenger of God? Very good question. If you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, you become a Muslim. If you believe Jesus is the messenger of God, that also makes you a Muslim. You cannot be a Muslim if you do not believe Jesus is the messenger of God. I told you earlier that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was born miraculously without any main intervention. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind lepers with God's permission. The Muslim and the Krishna are going together. But we do not believe he's God. So if you believe in all the messengers, Adam, Abraham, Ismail, Isaac, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, then you become a Muslim. And we believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger. If you believe this and believe in one God, then you become a Muslim. Next two questions. Okay. Should, should I believe in the Bible? Should you believe in the Bible? 
as far as should you believe in the bible as the word of god according to me bible is not the word of god what we muslims believe is the injil the revelation the wahi which was given to jesus peace be upon him but the present bible is not the original wahi it's a corrupted form all the revelation that came before the last and final revelation the quran the torah the zabur the injil because they were meant for a particular group of people as i mentioned in my talk almighty god did not think it fit to be preserved it was meant for those people in that time all these books have been changed but because quran is the last and final revelation of almighty god it was not revealed only for the muslims or the arabs it was revealed for the whole of humankind and it's supposed to be followed till eternity because of that almighty god will preserve this book it's mentioned in surah hijr chapter number 15 verse number 9 that we have revealed the quran and we shall guard it from corruption so this quran is in the pure authentic form the present bible is a changed form it contains words of god it contains words of prophet it contains words of historians it contains pornography it contains contradictions it's a mixture so whatever matches with the quran we have no objection in agreeing that part is the word of god the last question brother if you believe the bible is not the word of god then why do you quote from very good question if i do not believe the bible to be the word of god why do i quote i quote it because the christians believe it to be the word of god for example the non muslim doesn't believe the quran is the word of god but because i believe quran is the word of god he will point out anything from the quran i will follow i will not tell him i don't do believe quran is the word of god because i believe quran is the word of god i have to follow every word every letter of the quran similarly i do not believe everything of the bible to be the word of god but the christian believe now because the christian believe bible is the word of god he has to follow every word every letter of the bible as i told you some portion of the bible are correct so i am trying to bring the commonalities between quran and the bible and one commonality is the mention of prophet muhammad peace be upon him so from the bible which i feel is a mixture of correct and wrong things but the christian believe everything is correct so i am proving from that bible quoting deuteronomy chapter 18 verse number 18 gospel of john chapter 14 verse 6 all these verses and proving to the christians who believe that bible is the word of god that if you believe in the bible you also have to believe in prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if you believe in prophet muhammad you also have to believe in the quran so i am getting him closer to the truth i am a student of comparative religion i even quote the vedas the hindus believe vedas is the word of god and from the vedas i get them closer to the quran so i hope i have answered all your four question or do you have one more question there are many questions but uh, i'll put it <laughs> no but for now you said there are four question when i asked you earlier you said four yeah, now I you said, said many but your basic four questions have been answered correct yeah yeah and i asked you a question earlier two questions do you believe that none worthy of worship except allah and you said yes i said yes do you believe prophet muhammad as the messenger of allah i believe he is the messenger of allah masha that means you're muslim so now what i told you if you agree that there is no one worthy of worship except almighty god allah and you believe prophet muhammad is the messenger of allah these are the minimum two requirement for a person to become a muslim the other things are later on so if you believe in these two things you become a muslim would you like to say it in arabic brother would you like to say it in arabic no i have to make i have to make more research no no when you agree prophet muhammad is the messenger of god khalas the research you can yet do more research no problem even i study more and more about prophet muhammad the more i study the more i like i keep on reading his sira one time two time ten time i love it i'm not telling you after you become muslim you have to stop reading yet you have to continue even i keep on reading the quran the more i read the quran the more knowledge i get correct so i'm not telling you to stop reading but if you agree these are the minimum two things required then if you accept it the chances of agreeing is more you say you want to learn english first you have to take admission to the school correct you can't say i will stay outside and then learn you have to join and once you join you start going regular if you don't join then you don't go regular then the chances of you learning is less correct yeah. so would you like to join the religion of islam 
You believe there's one God? You believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? These are the minimum two things according to me, you're already a Muslim. According to me, you're already a Muslim. So if Muslim means one who submits his will to God. If I believe um, Muhammad is the messenger of God and I believe there is only one God, should I repeat what you say before I become a real Muslim? No, it's not required. Once you believe, you become. It is between you and Allah. It is between you and God. You don't have to say it in public also. You can even hide quietly and follow the religion. No one can stop you. But normally when you proclaim, the chances you will grow in that religion is more. If your life is in danger and you do it hidingly, it's accepted. You don't have to say it in front of the public. It is between you and Allah. I don't have to interfere with it. But normally when you proclaim it, the chances you will grow in it and the practice increases better. If you say no, I don't want to proclaim it, no one can force you. Therefore I ask, is anyone forcing you? I have that question. Forcing in Islam is prohibited. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 256, like Rafiddin, there is no compulsion in religion, truth stands out clear from error. But it continues, if you hold the hand of Allah, he will take you from darkness to light. If you hold the hand of the Satan, he will take you from light to darkness. But when you see it, there are chances more that other people now will come and give you more information. You will do more research. And the chances of you growing, going to standard 2, 3, 4, 10, graduate, postgraduate, is here. Do you understand? So seeing is not compulsory, it is preferable. Would you like to say it? According to me, you're already a Muslim. Would you like to say it? If you want to say, say yes, otherwise no, no one can force you. No, I don't, I don't want to say it. Okay, but you believe? Keep on believing it. You can practice even individually, no problem. I would request you to read more. And if you believe that there is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is a messenger, you become a Muslim and may Allah grant you good in this world and Akhirah, may Allah put you in Jannah. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Most welcome. Any question from the sister's side? Any non-Muslims who have any questions? Yes, brother. My name is Ernest Osei from TI Amas. I want to ask, uh, is, it is in the Bible that um, John 10, 30, I and my father are one. I don't understand. I want you to explain it to me. The brother has quoted a verse of the Bible, Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 30. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I and my father are one. Now, most of the Christian missionaries, they claim, because Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I and my father are one, it means he claimed divinity. To understand the verse, you have to know the context. If you go earlier, Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 23, it says that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, entered the temple in Solomon's porch. Verse number 24, the Jews surrounded him and asked him, how long does make us doubt? If thou art the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse number 25, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I told you, but you believe it not. The work that I do bear record of my father. Verse number 26, you do not believe because you do not believe in me. Verse number 27, my followers knoweth me and believe in me. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says in the Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 28, I give them eternal life and no man can pluck them out of my hand. Verse number 29, my father is greater than all, no man can pluck them out of my father's hand. Verse number 30, I and my father are one. One in purpose, not one in person. If I say, my father is a doctor, I am a doctor, I and my father are one, that means we both are doctors, it doesn't mean we are one human being. We are two different human beings, but we are one in purpose. Like in verse number 28, he says, no man can pluck the followers out of my hand. No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. They are one in purpose. That means the message which Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, bought was the message of Almighty God. That does not make him God. 
And if you say no, it means the same if you read further in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 21. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, My Father is in me, and I in thee. He tells the apostles, My Father is in me, I am in thee, and we all are one. That means there are 14 gods. Father and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Jesus and the 12 apostles will become 14 gods. Two verses later, Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 23. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tells the disciples, I I'm in thee and you are in me. Does it mean there are 13 gods? No. They are one in purpose. That means you have to deliver the same message of Almighty God. Almighty God sent a messenger, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He tells the apostles, you have to carry forward with the same message. We are one in purpose. So here one means purpose, doesn't mean one in divinity. Hope that answers the question. Yes, sir. Brother, do you believe that there is one God? Yes, sir. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of God? Yes. MashaAllah, if you believe that there is one God, and if you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, that means you're a Muslim. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Yes, sir. Masha, is anyone forcing you to become a Muslim? No. Are you doing it out of your own free will? Yes, sir. Is anyone giving you money? No. Okay, I'll say it in Arabic and you repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is none worthy of worship. There is none worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That that prophet muhammad prophet muhammad is the messenger is the messenger and servant of allah and son mashallah takbir 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 may almighty god allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you jannah give you paradise and may give you the best in this world and the hereafter i would request you i would like to give you a translation of the copy of the quran the most welcome to come on the stage Any non-Muslim from the sister's side, from the lady's side? If no, we can go to the brothers. Okay, yes, brother. Good evening, sir. My name is Robin Anthony. I'm a student of architecture. I would like to ask you, in the Bible, during the Last Supper, Jesus Christ took the bread and the cup of wine. He gave thanks and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in the memory of me. Why, do, why did he say that? The question posed is that during his last supper, he gave bread and he told them to drink. Why did he say it? When he gave the bread, if you're talking about gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, verse number 36, when he goes in the upper room and he meets the 12 apostles, he goes and he tells and wishes them shalom alaikum. May peace be on you. And the apostles are shocked that how could they see Jesus Christ peace be upon him. And he says, you handle me and see, for a spirit has no flesh and bones. He says, take and see my hand. Handle me and see, for a spirit has no flesh and bone. Because at that time, his disciples had thought that Jesus Christ peace be upon him was dead. So when Jesus Christ peace be upon him comes in front of the apostles, and he says, you handle my hand and feet. And see, a spirit has no flesh and bones. Because they think that he died and now he's come back in spirit form. So he's telling them that I'm not a spirit, I'm a human being yet. Then he says, do you have any broiled fish and honeycomb? Do you have something to eat? They say, yes. So he took the bread and honeycomb and he ate. He ate to prove to them that he was not a spirit, but he was a human being. To prove to them that he did not die on the cross he was alive he took bread broiled fish and honeycomb to prove it to them that he was not a spirit but he was a human being 
and this matches with what I said earlier that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die, but he was alive. Hope that answers the question, brother. Yes, please. Brother, do you believe that there is one God? Yes, please. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is messenger of God? Yes. MashaAllah, if you believe that there is one God, and you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, that means you're a Muslim. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Yes, please. Is anyone forcing you to become a Muslim? No. Are you doing out of your own free will? Yes, please. Is anyone paying you money? No. I say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That there is none worthy of worship. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Is the messenger and servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. Takbir. Allah. Takbir. Allah. Takbir. Mashallah, become a Muslim and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you Jannah and may he give you the best in this world and the Akhirah. I would like to give you a translation of the Quran. You're most welcome to come on the stage, brother. Yes, brother. Your name, your profession, and your question. Good evening, brother Zakir. My name is Phil Jones. I'm an SS graduate. I want to accept Islam, and I don't know which sex I should go. Because in Ghana here, there is Sunni Shia and Tijaniya. Part of them, they celebrate the birth of Prophet Muhammad, and part of them, too, they say it's haram. But I don't know which says I should go. Please help me. Brother said that he wants to accept Islam, but he wants to know which sect should he follow. Brother, you should become a Muslim. The verse I quoted in the beginning of my talk, Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 64, it says, Fakul Shadu, say ye bear witness, we are not Muslim, that we are bowing the will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you become a Muslim, you have to follow the Quran. And the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Anyone bring anything else away from Quran and Sunnah, you don't have to follow. You have to follow Quran and say Hadith. If you ask me, what am I? I will say I'm a Muslim. Quran says in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 103, Hold to the rope of Allah strongly. That is the glorious Quran and the say Hadith and be not divided. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Anam chapter 6 verse number 159, O oh Prophet, if anyone makes sex division in Islam, you have nothing to do with him. Allah will take care of his affairs on the day of judgment. Making sex in the region of Islam is haram. It is prohibited. You have to believe in Allah and believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That's it. And read the Quran and follow the Quran. Brother, do you believe that there is one Allah? Yes, brother. Do you believe that Jesus is God? No. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? Yes, I believe. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, brother. Are you doing out of your own free will? Yes. Is anyone giving you money? No. Okay, I'll say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Please, what about the birth of Prophet Muhammad? What about the? The celebration of the birth of Prophet Muhammad. The? The celebration of the birth of ah, Prophet what Muhammad. What about the celebration of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? In the Quran, nowhere in the Quran does it say that you have to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet. There is no authentic hadith. The companions of the Prophet, the Sahaba, they never celebrated the birthday of the Prophet. 
celebrating the birthday the western culture it is not part of islam the companions of the prophet hazrat abu bakar hazrat umar may allah be pleased with them all they never celebrated the birthday so this is an innovation it's a bidah it's an innovation any other question brother no sir that's all in my so question so you should not celebrate the birthday of the prophet you should love the prophet and follow his advice not celebrate his birthday okay okay and you I... should be a muslim not belonging to any sect okay okay now would you like to say it in arabic yes i do ashhadu ashhadu allah allah ilaha ilaha illa allah illa allah wa ashhadu wa ashhadu anna anna muhammadan muhammadan abduhu abduhu wa rasuluhu wa rasuluhu i bear witness i bear witness there is none worthy of worship there is none worthy of worship except allah except allah and i bear witness and i bear witness that prophet muhammad that prophet muhammad is the messenger is the messenger and servant of allah and servant of allah takbir allah takbir allah takbir allah mashallah may allah grant you paradise may he give you the good in this world and the year after i would like to give to you a copy of the translation of the quran can you come on the stage please Any non-Muslim sisters have any question? Yes, brother. Your name? My name and your is. Any profession? Any question? My name is Sumani George. I want to first of all know: Is it um, a prerogative for one to possess a, a, a Christian name and be a Muslim? Is it possible yeah. for one to have a Christian name and be a Muslim? Yes, brother. As long. as the name is not shirk if it's a name associating partners with god that you have to change if it's a general name john jack you can keep your name and yet be a muslim for muslim you have to believe that there's none worthy of worship except allah and prophet muhammad is the messenger you become muslim you can continue with your name you don't have to change your name it's not compulsory brother do you believe that there is one allah Yes I do. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? Long before today. Mashallah. So would you like to say it in Arabic? Would yeah. you like to say it in Arabic? Yes. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No. Are you doing it of your own free will? Yes. I'll say it in Arabic and you repeat it. Ashhadu ashhadu Allah Allah ilaha ilaha illa Allah illa Allah wa ashhadu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Muhammadan Rasulullah Muhammadan Muhammadan abduhu abduhu wa rasuluhu wa rasuluhu I bear witness I bear witness there is none worthy that, of worship there is no god but Allah but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of God Mashallah takbir Allah takbir Allah takbir Mashallah may Allah grant you paradise may he give you the good in this world and akhirah i would like to give to you a copy of the translation of the quran i would request the volunteers if they can get a few more copies of the quran two more at least Yes brother the last non muslim this is the last question are there any other non muslim besides this brother any other non muslim from the lady side or gent side any other non muslim if non muslim want to come forward they yet have time they can come to the microphone ladies on the left microphone gents on the right yes brother your name your profession and your question i'm a guest in i currently completed university and my question is the explanation 
that Jesus did not die, using the newest scenario to explain. To me, it doesn't sound so convincing because a lot of people explain it in a different way too. To mean the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus within that three day period. And besides, there are some quotations to that back said that Jesus died. And another question is, if Muslims believe in the prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah and the rest, because they also prophesy about the coming of the Messiah and the death of the Messiah. So if the Messiah did not die, then they told lies. The brother wants some information about the death and the rising of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And they prophesy the coming of the Messiah and they prophesy that the Messiah will die. I do agree with it. They prophesy the coming of the Messiah and they prophesy the Messiah will die. Every man has to die. Even the Quran says in Surah Maryam, chapter number 19, verse number 33, peace be on me, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, say, the day that I was born, the day that I will die, the day that I shall be resurrected. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born, but Allah Almighty God raised him up alive. In his second coming, he will come as an ummah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In his second coming, he will come and he will die. Now, he is raised up alive. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 158, that Almighty God raised him up alive. Even the Christian believes he was raised. What I say, that if you read the Bible correctly, he was put on the cross, he did not die. He was put alive in the sepulcher. Then Almighty God raised him up alive. In his second coming, when he comes, he will die. So he will come again not to bring a new message. He will come to testify to the Christians. He never told that you should worship me, but O oh, Budullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, who is my Lord and your Lord. This is even mentioned in the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 116, that in the next life, in the year after, Jesus will tell, peace be upon him, Almighty God, he never told the Christians to worship him. But he said, O oh, Budullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, who is my Lord and your Lord. Hope this terrifies, brother. Yeah, but how they describe his death, that he will bear our sins and things like that. Nowhere does it say, nowhere does it say he will pay for the sins. This is the teachings of Paul, not of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Point out a single verse of the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I will pay for the sin. It goes against the teachings of Ezekiel. I'm talking of the prophets, not Jesus, the old prophets. Old prophets, yeah, you have like to I understand. Said. If you read the Bible, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 18, verse number 20, the soul that sins shall die. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. That means the father shall not bear the sins of the sons. The son shall not bear the sins of the father. Righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked turns, he shall not die. According to the Bible, sin cannot be inherited. Sin cannot be inherited. Nowhere did Jesus ever say that he will die for the sin of humankind. That means that portion of the Bible which says that is not correct. We are here to follow the teachings of Christ, not of the other people. You know, there's the Old Testament, New Testament. In the New Testament, out of 27 books, 13 books have been written by St. Paul. Now, St. Paul wasn't even an apostle of Jesus. He's a self-appointed apostle. So what you're following today is the Pauline Christianity, not what was taught by Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I do not believe in St. Paul. I believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. I don't want to believe in the teachings of St. Paul. Is it clear? Yeah. We have to believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Okay. Do you believe there's one God? I'm not done, please. You're not? Yeah. Do you believe Jesus is God? There's, there's still something you need to clear here for me, please. No, but do you believe in Jesus as God or not? According to the Bible, it says so. Where does it say? Point out a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me, I will accept Christianity. Not Jesus who said it. If but... somebody else says, what does it make a difference? When Jesus himself did not say, you know, when I give lecture in India, 
many of the Hindus, they touch my feet and call me God. Do I become God? No. You know, because I quote the Hindu scriptures, you know how I quote the Bible. Some of the Hindus touch my feet and they say, Tum Bhagwane. Does it make me God? No. Same way somebody but else says Jesus is God, it doesn't make him God. Brother, do you believe Jesus is God? Peace be upon him. And about the Holy Spirit too. Brother, do you believe Jesus is God? Yes. You believe he's God? Yeah. I'm still Where did he say he was God? Church says. Yet to find quotations on that. Sorry? I don't memorize the quotations of it. But you know that it is mentioned in the Bible? Yes. Where? You do one thing, let the other people ask you a question. By the time you search, you search in the index, where does Jesus say he God? You know there's an index. If you don't know, you look in the index or look in the... But my question is not about Jesus being God. Sorry? My question is not about Jesus being God or not. No, my question to you. You ask me so many questions, now I'm asking you one question. Do you believe Jesus? It's not your question, it's my question. Because I love you, brother. Yeah. I love you. I was told to come and ask questions, not to lecture, so I came with questions. No, well, you can ask questions, very good. Yeah. But even I'm asking you one question. I can ask you or not? Yes or no? After I finish mine. Okay, how many questions do you have more? One. Okay, yes, brother, one more. And it's about the Holy Spirit. What's your question about Holy Spirit? John 14, verse 26. It says emphatically that the Comforter is the, uh, the Holy Spirit. But if it says that, that means there is a contradiction. You read in your Bible, open your Bible, Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is explained for you that I go away. For if I go not, the Comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him? If it refers to the Comforter, the Comforter was early there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came. I told that earlier, the Holy Spirit was there in the womb of Elizabeth. Brother, the Holy Spirit was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was being baptized. It's mentioned in the Gospel. So surely, it cannot refer to the Holy Spirit. That means there's a contradiction in the Bible. Like how I told you in my lecture. Jesus, peace be upon him, says that John the Baptist is the Elias. When they ask John the Baptist, art thou Elias? He says, no. There's a contradiction. Who's right, who's wrong? You have to solve the problem. Because I do not consider the Bible to be the word of God. You consider it to be the word of God. So you have to solve that problem. Because you quoted that John to explain. That's why I'm also trying to... Because no, I'm quoting John, chapter yeah. 14, verse number 16. John chapter 15 verse 26. John chapter 16 verse and number 7. All is in context only. Chapter 14 verse 16 also the description it gave. It says it will abide with us forever. Correct. But Muhammad never abided with us forever. He is he abiding died. with us forever. He died. This is the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. This is the revelation which he got the Quran. And he's saying the Hadith. It's abiding with the human being forever. No one can change the Quran. The Injil has been changed, not the Quran. That means after Prophet Muhammad, no other messenger will come. Where is the Holy Spirit? I don't know where is the Holy Spirit. Brother, where is the Holy Spirit? Brother, where is the Holy Spirit? The verse 17 says, no, no, brother, I'm asking you, where is the Holy Spirit? The verse 17 is giving the answer. Verse number? 17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world Chapter number which? Visit. Chapter 14, verse yes. 17. What does it say? The Spirit of whom the world cannot receive, because neither sees him nor knows him. The okay. word the neither word? sees him nor knows him. Who? The Spirit spirit of truth that the Bible was talking about. So, what does it mean? That's why what I'm does it mean? That you explained to me. I don't, I don't get it. I've already explained to you in my lecture. You don't want to believe in my explanation. What can I do? I'm giving you the explanation, but you remember the explanation of the church, which is not matching with the Bible. So what am I to do? This comforter 
in Greek is translated from parakletos. The actual meaning of parakletos is a good friend and advocate. If they say comfort, I've got no problem. But the original word is parakletos, meaning the one who praises. If you go to the original manuscript, Greek and Aramaic word here is parakletos, meaning one who praises. If you translate into Arabic, it means Ahmad. I told in my lecture, it's talking about the one who praises. That's another name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hope that answers the question. Any sisters have any questions? Any non-Muslim sisters? Is there any non-Muslim from the brother's side? Last one? Okay, brother. Your name, your profession, and a question. Kofi Abrifa Clement. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22, you quoted, um, Peter said, This Jesus, a man approved of God. Luke wrote the book of Acts. He was not a disciple of Jesus. Then Paul quoted the book of 1 Timothy 3, 16. He says, Without any controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifest in the flesh. He was seen by angels. He was preached. He was justified. So my main question is, if you have quoted from Acts, written by Luke, who was not a disciple, then you have opened your case, then I can also consider someone else like Paul, who was not directly part of the disciples. Thank you. Brother has quoted, because I quote Acts, he can quote somebody else. Brother, I told you very clearly, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or where he says worship me. If you can point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement from the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or where he says worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. What I quoted Acts, what at a different time. I quoted Deuteronomy, which is not the words of Jesus, peace be upon him. I quoted to you the words of Jesus earlier. Gospel of John chapter 14, verse number 28. My father is greater than I. It's the words of Jesus, Christ, peace be upon him. Gospel of John chapter 10, verse number 29. My father is greater than all. Words of Jesus, peace be upon him. Now, in my lecture, I quoted to you many places of the Bible. What my challenge says, if you want to prove Jesus is God, point out a single unequivocal statement. From the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God, or where he says, worship me. Now, one place, if you are telling, see, you have a problem you have got. I'm giving the answer and doing like that, like that. If you are doing like that, like that, you cannot understand my answer. Listen to my answer. Keep your mind open and listen to my answer. If you keep on doing like that, like that, like that, you will not understand. See, you are telling him now. I'm talking to you and you're talking to somebody else. It means I accept it. That is what... Uh... You at least listen. After man says over, then you can open your mouth. Why you are not listening to man, sir? Again, you did the same problem which you did earlier. My challenge is point out a single unequivocal statement from the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. Now, I have given many statements, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 18, which is not words of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I quoted book of Acts chapter 2, verse number 22, which is not the saying of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I know it. Now, even if you quote which is not the words of Jesus, you believe the Bible to be the word of God? Yes, please. That means there's a contradiction in your Bible. Okay, you don't want to quote the words of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Keep it aside. Book of Acts chapter 2, verse number 22, the word of God or not? So it is contradicting with Paul. So you have to solve the problem. How can there be a contradiction in the word of God? That means there's a problem. Therefore, I do not agree Bible is the word of God. When book of Acts chapter number 2, verse number 22 clearly says, E men of Israel, listen to this, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. Now you quote to me, words of Paul. Now it is the word of God, word of God is more important, the word of Paul is more important. 
So if there is a contradiction, there are hundreds of contradictions in the Bible. According to the scholars of Christianity, there are 50,000 errors in the Bible. How many? How many? The law of non-contradiction. 50,000 errors in the Bible according to scholars of Christianity. 50,000. You see my video cassette, Bible and Quran in the light of science. There are many contradictions. There are many scientific errors. Read that, hear that, and you'll be convinced that Bible is not the word of God. Are there any questions from the sister's side? Is there any non-Muslim like to ask a question here? Oh, yes, brother. My name Can is Derek Mensa, an SHS graduate. Can you speak a bit slowly and clearly? Yeah, SHS graduates. Please, I want to convert into Muslim. I have been very impressed with your lectures. And I like it. Come Mashallah, you have been hearing my lectures. You want to accept Islam? Yes, yes, please. Do you believe that there is yeah, one God? Yeah, I believe that. Do you believe that Jesus is God? Yeah, I believe that. Do you believe Jesus is God? No, no, no. I believe he's the messenger of God. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yeah, I believe that. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No. You are doing out of your own free will? Yeah, my own. You have been hearing my lectures on the television? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Peace TV? Yeah, please. Since how long? Because it's five years more. Five years? Yeah. Mashallah, I did not know that there's a Christian in Ghana, in Kumasi, who's hearing my lectures. Mashallah. May Allah guide you more. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Oh, no, no. no you are doing out of your own free will? Yeah, yeah. I'll say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. There is none worthy of worship. There is one Lord worth worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That. That. Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad. Is the messenger. Is the messenger. And servant of Allah. Servant of Allah. Takbir. No. Takbir. No. Takbir. No. Mashallah. May Allah grant you Jannah. May he give you the good in this world and thereafter. I would like to give you a copy of the glorious Quran, the translation. Is there a non-Muslim like to ask a question? No. No. We can have maybe two questions from the sister side and two from the gen side from the Muslims. Yes. We can take the first question from the sister side who's a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Dr. Zak. My name is Rueda. I want to attend your school. <laughs> so what can you do for me? MashaAllah, a young, young Muslim has asked me that she wants to attend my school. What should she do? We have a school in Bombay, India, as well as a school in Chennai. We don't have a school in Ghana. If you are to attend the school, you have to ask your parents to come along with you to Bombay. <laughs> because we don't have a boarding, you'll have to stay with your parents. We have students coming from other parts of the world, from America, from UK, from Gulf country. We have two schools, one in Bombay, one in Chennai. You're most welcome to choose which you want. You have to convince your parents to come to India. And inshallah, if your parents are convinced, inshallah, I'll give you admission. I hope that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. I'm Sadia. I'm the mother. But we can't afford. If only you can help her, but we can't. <laughs> I know it is difficult for a person to come from one country to the other country. What I would request to you is that you find the best available Islamic school in Ghana. Try and find the best available Islamic school in Ghana and put your daughter there. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah guides her 
and gets her closer to the Quran and Sunnah so that she can convey the message of Islam to the others. Can we have the question from the Muslim brother here? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm Abdul Jawad Muhammad. I'm a student. And my question is that I want to ask uh, how many times was Muhammad mentioned in the Bible? Please, that's my question. The brother asked the question, how many times this Prophet Muhammad mentioned in the Bible? By name, I know of only one place. By name. Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. Prophecy-wise, many places. Several places in the Old Testament and the New Testament. What I gave you is maybe about few verses from the Old Testament and few verses from the New Testament. There are multiple more. By name, he's only mentioned once in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse number 16. Then we have the next question from the sister. My name is Shahada Umar, an emergency nursing officer at Tafo Hospital, Kumasi. There is a particular verse in the Bible we Christians used to almost defeat some Muslims. There was one Muslim who just um, became a Christian because of this verse. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one goes to the Father except through me. Please, can you elaborate on this so that we all understand? What sister has quoted is a verse of the Bible from Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6. She did not give the reference, but this is a common verse quoted by the Christian missionary, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me. For knowing the meaning of this, this does not mean that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. You have to know the context. For the context, you go to verse number one. Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number one says that if your heart is troubled, if you believe in God, believe in me also. Verse number two says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Verse number three, four, five. I go there to prepare a place for you. And when I prepare the place, I will come back and take you unto me. Next verse says that you know whether I go and you know the way. Thomas says, we don't know whether thou goest and which is the way. Then Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto my father but through me. Every prophet at this time, he was the way, the truth, and the life. No man came unto Almighty God but through the prophet's teaching. At the time of Moses, Moses, peace be upon him, was the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto Almighty God but through Moses. At the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, he was the way, the truth, and the life. No man came unto Almighty God but through Jesus, peace be upon him. Today, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto Almighty God but through the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him. This does not mean he's God. It means Jesus, peace be upon him, is saying, if you want to go to God, you come through my teachings. So what is wrong in that? We believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. A student of academic theology and a radio analyst on the program Nyamesumu Uhuemu on Fox FM every Sunday from 8 to 10 in Kumasi with the major uh, and popular radio host of Ayasu Bontin. My question is, we have a problem with the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John as not being the Gospels of uh, Jesus Christ. So where is the Gospel of Jesus Christ? And then I have a problem with the songs of Solomon. Wait, wait. One question at a time. Yes, sir. You are a Muslim, not a non-Muslim. Yes. Non-Muslim, I give chance. Muslim, only one question. Yeah, okay. The brother said we have a problem with gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We want gospel of Jesus, peace be upon him. We Muslims believe in the Injil, the gospel, the Wahi, which was given to Isa, alayhi salam. What we have in the Bible, the four canonical books, the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they do not know who the author is. So they say it's the gospel according to Matthew, gospel according to Mark, gospel according to Luke, gospel according to John. 
what we Muslims believe is gospel according to Isa alayhi salam, gospel according to Jesus, and there's no gospel. We believe in the wahi, the revelation, which was revealed to Jesus, peace be upon him. What we have in the Bible is the books written according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which we don't consider as prophets of God. When they get us the gospel according to Jesus, peace be upon him, we can analyze, but they don't have it. Hope that answers the question. We'll have the last question. The last question we'll have from the sister before we end the session. The last question from the Muslim sister. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Rahma Abdul Karim. Doctor, please, I would like to know if there is any chapter in the Quran or any authentic hadith that talks about Prophet Moses' parents' name. The sister asked the question that is there any verse in the Quran or authentic hadith which speaks about the name of the parents of Musa alayhi salam? This is a question posed to me by certain Muslims. I don't know of any verse in the Quran which speaks about the name of the parents of Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Neither do I know of any authentic hadith which mentions the name of the parents of Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. I want to ask you a question. What will you do after coming to know the names of parents of Moses, peace be upon him? I just want to know. Ah, because this is a question asked by certain Muslims, and I ask them, what benefit will you achieve? When Almighty God did not say it in the Quran, do people ask questions, will it increase your faith? Sister, will it increase your faith? Will it decrease your faith? No. I don't know of any verse in the Quran which mentions the name of the parents of Musa I would like to end this program and I have to thank the volunteers and all the brothers and sisters who spent their time in organizing this function. I would like to thank even the chief of the Kumasi for helping in organizing this program. And I pray to Almighty God that may he bring peace to this country of Ghana. And because we know there is a certain disease spending in West Africa of Ebola, we pray to Almighty God that he protects this country and the people from this disease of Ebola. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We thank Allah for making this program a success. Before the end of the program, we would like to call on stage our Imam, Dr. Sheikh Ismail Saeed Adam, to make dua for our doctor and the entire Ummah of the Muslims in Ghana and the whole world, inshallah. So with a very big takbir, let's welcome on stage our doctor, Sheikh Ismail Saeed Adam. A takbir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al mursalina amma baat. Ah, nadu Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. An yubarak fi shahana. Ah, Dr. Al-Levi hakikatan amila amalan kullu muslim gayur la budda an yadu ulahu. Hawala kai يقيم الدعوة في أول اليوم فلم يتمكن ذهب إلى أكرا ورجع فجزاه الله خيرا لا نطيل عليكم In fact, we pray for our renowned Dr. Naik May God help you From the first day you wanted to preach because of the rain you went to Accra, you came back Here we all know that you are doing this jihad to raise the image of Islam and Muslims. May God help you. God save you and send you to your place safely and all your entourage. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi la akhirati hasana wa kina adhaba nar wa adakin la jannata ma la abrar ya aziz ya gafar ya rabbil alameen Allahumma hadina fi man hadayta wa aafina fi man aafayta وَتَوَلَّنَا فِي مَنْ تَوَلَّيْتَ اللَّهُمَّ كِنَا شَرَّ بِرَحْمَتِكَ مَا كَدَيْتْ وَإِنَّكَ تَقْدِي وَلَا يُقْدَى عَلَيْكْ إِنَّهُ لَا يَعِزُّ مَنْ آدَيْتْ وَلَا يَزِلُّ مَنْ وَالَيْتْ تَبَارَكْتَ رَبَّنَا وَتَعَلَيْتْ اللَّهُمَّ أَحْسِنَ آكِبَتَنَا فِي الْأُمُورِ كُلِّهَا 
اللهم أحسنا آكبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وأذاب الآخرة اللهم كسم لنا من خشيتك ما تهول به بيننا وبين معصيتك اللهم إنا نسألك أن توصلهم إلى ديارهم سالمين اللهم ارسلهم إلى ديارهم سالمين اللهم انصرهم اللهم انصرهم اللهم انصرهم اللهم انصرنا جميعا اللهم انصرنا جميعا برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المصلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم